All right, I will call this meeting to order at 6.48 p.m. I'm joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Walner, Mr. Studo, and Mrs. Gonzalez. And we'll begin with a recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And as uh, Mr. Gilberto explained, this meeting is being recorded by the town of North Reading as well as NORCAM. In our first order of business is a proclamation for dollars for scholars. Mr. Strudo, I just wanna remind you if you're reading anything, you have to unmute yourself, all right? Thank you. And, Ms. and Mr. Gilberto, we'll, we'll let you take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I do believe that we have a representative here um, from um, Dollars for Scholars. I believe Kathy Ak Akiavati is with us and hopefully I pronounced her last name correctly. Um, Kathy, if you need, I can ask you to unmute. Is that Kathy's iPhone? I think that's her. Okay. Yes. Kathy, you there? Okay, we hear you. Thank you. Welcome, Kathy. Why don't you give us a little explanation of what Dollars for Scholars is and what you need from us? Don't you usually fundraise around this time? Yes, it is. We don't normally do the phone-a-thon, but this year with the situation with the kids and the students making phone calls, we've decided to turn it into a mail-a-thon, which means that coming next week in the, in the mailboxes will be an explanation of, of what we've done we always send out a letter, a pledge card actually. And this year they just won't be, I did, won't be notified by phone. It's going to be all by mail. Okay, and, and your fundraising for scholarships which are provided to mm -hmm. North Reading seniors. For seniors and, and postgraduates of the town of North Reading. Okay. And you do this every year, I think we're all I think I shouldn't say we're all, but most of us are pretty familiar with this program and you and you give the program. How many scholarships do you provide every year? Last year, we provided 42 scholarships for $28,000. Pretty amazing. And yep. I'm sure all of those uh, students could use that extra help this year, especially. So, yes. um, okay, so that, that uh, mail-a-thon, um, is there a, is there also a link to your program's website for people that are listening or, or attending our meeting here? It should be all listed in the letter and yes, it's North Reading dollars for scholars .org. And how can people give to the, to the cause? We have credit cards set up. We have, um, we normally receive checks in the mail. There'll be a pledge card in each envelope with the, with the PO box address. All right, great. Does anyone have any questions for Kathy or comments for Kathy? Chair? Of course, Mr. O'Leary. No, Mr. again, again I just want to reiterate this. This is a uh, again an annual opportunity for me to uh, express our gratitude as a family for uh, the assistance that was given to my two boys uh, when they were going to college. And uh, everybody knows that the cost of uh, education higher education is extraordinary. Even if you go to the state schools, it's extraordinary, but you know, it help buy the books and you know, other uh, ancillary costs. It certainly is extremely helpful and grateful and it's a worthy cause. And, um, of course, uh, some people are aware that, you know, my father spent 25 years on the school committee and when he passed away, we endowed, uh, did an endowment with the um, Citizen Scholarship Foundation. And, uh, you know, I, I urge everybody to, to support it. It's a, it's a worthy cause. It certainly is helpful for all the local families and kids that uh, go on from higher education. So uh, and to, to the people, it's a, it's a labor of love. And, and again, you know, uh, late Brad Jones, you know, who passed away this past year. I know that his family has set up a, a fund, you know, there with the Citizen Scholarship Foundation uh, to endow a, um, an amount for him in his name. And again, certainly worthy to, uh, to uh, give in his name too. So again, for all that you do, extremely grateful. And what you've done for us, uh, extremely grateful. Thank you. And thank you for the kind words. And Jean Jones has been excellent with us. She, she helped me make a few adjustments to this year when I couldn't have the children calling. So she was a big help. Yeah. 
That's great. All right. Anyone else? We're good. Mr. Gilberto, it says proclamation. Yeah. However, I can't find that in our folder. Is that just to proclaim it's time to... to it's, it it proclaims the, it's the, the week that the mailings can go out. Okay. Page it's 59. usually to proclaim when the phone calls are made. All right. I okay. have it. It's page 59, Madam Chair. Oh, all right. I went right by it then. I'm sorry. I'm on page 74 looking, <laughs> looking for the dollars for scholars. All right. Oh, yes. Okay. So let's read this proclamation then. Uh, whereas the North Reading Dollars for Scholars is a group of hardworking, dedicated individuals, and whereas the North Reading Dollars for Scholars members have devoted both time and talent to the difficult task of seeking scholarship funds for deserving students, and whereas North Reading Dollars for Scholars is planning its annual mailathon for the week of March 22nd to 26th. 2021, where high school students will contact all North Reading homes by mail seeking pledges to the North Reading Dollars for Scholars Scholarship Fund. Now, therefore, we, the select board of North Reading, do hereby proclaim the week of March 26th to 22nd to 26th, 2021, as North Reading Dollars for Scholars Week and urge all citizens to open their hearts and their purses to the benefit of North Reading students who want to continue their education by the select board. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kathy, for um, joining us and giving us an explanation. And please, everybody who's participating, if you check could your mailboxes <laughs> and spread the word and check the website and make a donation. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. All right, in our next order of business are the fiscal year um, 20. Madam Chair. Did I miss something, Mr. There's Stewart? a There's a motion oh, for I'm, it. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Uh, so, Madam, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, I move to proclaim March 22nd, 26, <laughs> 2021 it, as North Reading Dollars for Scholars Week and to read the attached proclamation, which you did. Second. Sorry, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Studo's motion seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez, you're on mute. Aye. And Mrs. Manupelli is I. I'm sorry, folks. I see this whole list of departmental budgets, and I'm if if I haven't, if you're not seeing, I'm getting hives from this list. So <laughs> I'm I'm anxious to move move forward. Although that's a great cause. So motion carries. Okay, now our next order of business is the fiscal year 2022 departmental hearings. We have Parks and Rec up first. And we have joining us, who do we have here? Mr. Tilton. I see Mrs. Ma Ms. Mullen here with us. Maureen. There's our director right there, <laughs> Ms. Stevens. Go ahead, proceed, please. Hello, everybody. I'm Maureen Stevens. I'm the Operations Director, Department Head of Parks and Recreation. I'm going to do a, a presentation, so I'm going to share the screen. Um, I'll do the presentation, and I'm sure you'll have questions after it. So let me give that a try. We always hope that that will work. So let's try that. And I'll get that back to the beginning and we'll get it to work from the beginning. All right. So, all right. So we have our budget for fiscal year 22. I'm just gonna go over quickly the accomplishments. We all became very skilled in the COVID compliances, the parks worked through the crisis, updating signage, we didn't have any seasonal help this year, first time since IRP opened. Recreation ran summer and fall activities with limited sizes because of the adherence to the guidelines. Youth and adult leagues and their parent volunteers did an outstanding job to present sport opportunities. And we dealt with um, some local business partnerships to allow the use of the parks because their in-store in opportunities or dance studios were too small. And we assisted the town when needed due to COVID. So our objectives are pretty simple, gain back the necessary revenues we lost, recreation, get back to all the programs we weren't able to offer, and hopefully with less restrictions going forward and parks, 
uh, get back to addressing the needs of the parks that we weren't able to do due to the lack of our, our seasonal employees. So performance indicators, just real quick. We have about 7,800 member accounts. Those are people that are on email blasts and things like that. We only ran 47 activities, as you can see, down 204, scheduled 4,200 permanent hours. Still a lot, but still down 3,200 hours. Our staff was working just full time doing everything and they to learn everything to be able to do whatever we could. And again, we assisted the town departments upon request. So that was then uh, fiscal year 19, end of the fiscal year, nice surplus, 80, almost 82,000, 81,615 surplus, retained earnings balance of 223 at the end of that fiscal year. Flip that to 2020, and we have an $86,000 deficit we ended with because of our loss in budgeted revenues of 162,150 and listed through Recreation League parks each took a hit, hit, hit. And that was just a loss from March to June, a three month deficit um, of $162,000. Brought our retained earning balance at the end of fiscal year 30, I mean fiscal year 20, uh, down to uh, 145, 571. It was quite a hit. We were able to do it, but we'd rather that money go somewhere uh, in capital. So this is now. So right now what we're going through is fiscal year 21. We're rebuilding um, our projected revenues. We have a, right now we have a $73,000 of the deficit. We have projected revenues that we know through the big leagues that um, have given us some pre, pre numbers of 60, almost $61,000. Those aren't their end numbers, but they're solid almost to the end numbers. They will go up a bit. Recreation programs, not yet known. Park revenues, not yet known. Uh, park revenues, we hope to, the guidance is supposed to go up on March 22nd for larger gatherings. We'll work with the guidelines on those and open up the parks and the bathrooms. Recreation programs, a lot ready to open the jar for, just uh, can't determine the pricing and everything right yet. Um, the recreation director can talk about what she's planning uh, on that. A lot of exciting things that we're waiting for. So we will have a deficit. I'm pretty uh, sure we're going to have a deficit, but it won't be of the significance we had in 20. Um, I'm hoping if we can come under $20,000 deficit, that would be a win in our column. It's a deficit, which is not fun, but it's just really tough uh, with uh, the limited sizes we're allowed on a lot of the things, even the leagues. There's so many limitations that they can do. So our revenue details, it shows everything. Those are our, our categories, leagues, fields, concession, recreation, everything is brought down to, uh, to show the reductions, restrictions, the limitations that we're up against uh, for gatherings and um, social distancing and just all the like. We just can't run big programming. And the fact that we didn't have any indoor programming um, at all um, in, the, um, in the schools or here at Town Hall, we lost a lot revenue that way. So we're trying to make things different, um, but it's still, it's still going to take a hit. But with reduced revenues goes reduced expenses. So a budget summary basically is showing uh, our, we're going to bring in about 313, we hope. We're asking 14,005 for a retain for a mower. Uh, we had that mower in this year's budget, but we're cutting it um, to reduce our deficit and we're going to reallocate it for uh, fiscal year 22. Uh, the town funding, they subsidize three director salaries. That's uh, the general amount. Um, it does show that we'll have a deficit based on what I have. And uh, we were hoping, and I'll explain it later, um, about uh, there is one DPW Parks employee that, um, that would, if that were to be funded from the town, uh, that would defray the loss down to zero. So again, this is how it would come out. It comes out, I'm hoping to get 636,982 out of this budget between revenues retained, some funding of our salaries and an additional request for the DPW um, employee, um, personnel funding, like I say, it um, basically, our personnel funding is 499,709 of which the town picks up 252. We usually pick up 190 and we're looking for an additional 56 from the town. So that's just who they are, operations director, the admin and who they are. Um, our personnel is obviously our big thing because we are service related uh, to, do our, to do our functions. So expenses again, just all in a nutshell, service, supply, other charges, just all our everyday things that we do. Again, the mower is crossed out on fiscal year 21, $18,000. Um, that wasn't the cost of the mower. The mower is 14,500. 
The difference in that is cameras that now we're going to have gifted from friends of. So the 14 cut from 21, we hit on 22 because we really need it. Um, so that's that total of 636. Mm -hmm. So this just explains everything. Everything's a decrease, little increase in the electricity, but on that, it's a decrease, decrease to um, reflect the cuts that um, I've made across the board, whether it be cable, phones, uh, even bank credit card fees. If you have less revenue, then you, they don't cost as much as well because it's percentage based. Um, and some of our, even our um, recreation uh, programming um, maintenance software is based on revenue. So these things are decreased to show the decrease in our revenues and also cu any cuts that I can made, they're made permanently basically. So they were cuts. These are cuts that were made in 21 that are kind of moving over into 22. Um, and this again, another cut, it's a lower uh, registration system is based on revenue. So I decreased it $500. Um, we need your assistance. Basically, um, the town has been picking up the operations park and recreation director. That's a request number one of 252 for the subsidy. But the DPW Parks Union position is one that uh, we're looking to have taking over as well. And I'll get to that in just a minute, um, exactly where it came from and where we're at. So the, in the closing, in March through June, pandemic, cuts ensued, no field maintenance people, recreation worked hard, went to the drawing board many times to address the challenging guidelines to bring up some programs. It was an A, B, C, D thing. And then July through now, FY21, we did run programming all smaller, which did reduce our uh, numbers, but we brought in revenue. And spring and summer program is on the way back. Um, parks were utilized still by hundreds of people. Our park was open here in North Reading and the hundreds of people came and the parks department was very busy just taking care of that. Uh, the leagues ran, we had field hockey, football drills, little league, soccer, softball, men's softball, men's baseball. We appreciate all of those volunteers stepping up to the challenges and they sure did have a lot of challenges to put those, um, to put those leagues out into play. They did a phenomenal job. So we give big kudos. So spring leagues and park rentals are planned. We, my desk is full of requests and we're uh, working through and getting those all taken care of and recreation is ready to play. So, and this is my personal closing request. After 25 years with the town of North Reading, I'm retiring in August. I began uh, with the veterans in 96, but worked closely within inches of parks and recreation to desk operation as this picture of a park was finalizing. Uh, their uh, FY97 budget, pre-me, I wasn't there, included a part-time rec director and some supplies. Their total budget was 54185 funded by the town. Then I was recruited by Rita Mullen, because uh, she was in the next seat over, <laughs> to manage the expanded Ipswich River Park offerings and league expansions. I was hired as a part-time secretary. So um, that expanded as well. By 1999, it was myself, a parks director, and a part-time rec director. So... With that, as you can see, and I won't go over it, from fiscal year uh, 2000 to fiscal year 2019, our revolving, at the time it was revolving, non-enterprise, revolving fund revenues went from 107,000, you know, pre-budget of, uh, so a 400% increase in um, revenues. So the job was done, a business plan was put in place and things were happening and leagues were organized and more leagues came on and we got room for everybody. So there were many changes of personnel along the way, but not me, I stayed. <laughs> so in 2008, I became the operations director, department head, and the dream team, as we all love to call ourselves, was established. Myself, Marty Tilton, Lynn Clemens, Chris Deming, and Mar Maria Brown. We know Chris has gone off to the DPW, but he still remains in our park's heart. Um, that's where the team started, and our new additions of Nancy Orsino, Mike Marciano, Brian Ald, and Rich Giordano remain with us today. So they're all part of our team and we always call ourselves a team. We refer to ourselves as a team because without either any one of us, this wouldn't happen. These, this growth that you see before you wouldn't have happened um, you know, going forward from 08. So we really moved in new directions. Again, I won't read it. Permanent bathrooms, turf fields, fields were improved, rec center overhauls, barbecues happened, became festivals, the list goes on. There's so much work, we have more to do, we really do. Um, so as my parting wish, I ask that the town fund the DPW Parks Union position in lieu of our department. That position is under the DPW Union. It works under, 
it works under um, us and uh, funded by the Parks Division, but it's also used for DPW for snow and ice and DPW emergencies. It's an arrangement that should be updated. The Parks Department is not self-supporting. It relies on recreation profits to fund its share of the department. So we have two DPW Parks and Union positions. One is already funded under the DPW Union. This is number two that we've been funding since 2008. And um, it's, it's um, I feel it should be because it's town owned land and town workers that the town should pick that up. That's just my personal feeling. Again, it's a parting wish. And I hope that the town will really look into that. It's something that, again, it's an arrangement, but I think it needs to be updated. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly a department split analysis that's taking the parks department and the rec department, splitting it, taking the recreation people that programmers and seasonal people that belong over there and, um, and splitting like myself, the admin assistant in the park. So it's, it's a true split. It really shows for the FY22, a $69,000 parks loss based on that budget and a $12,000 profit, hence the $56,000 net uh, loss. For fiscal year 21, if I were to split that budget, it still shows that we would have taken a $54,000 loss uh, for that position um, in fiscal year 21 based on that budget. So in essence, the Parks Department cannot sustain, um, even in good times, that position readily. The profits that we're making and that are going into retained are because of the profitability of the recreation programs. So it's just something that I just feel that it would be better suited over there, the town would take on the, the parks uh, department in that way, taking on just that. And we would take care of right now, the seasonals, service supply, which is quite a, which is quite a, um, an amount of money to take care of all the uh, 100 acres that we do in Ipswich River Park and the leagues and things like that and put into retained and what have you. So, um, so that's the end of my presentation. So I'm gonna stop the share and I can certainly bring it back up if you have questions about a specific slide or just specifically anything. Okay, so we'll, um, we're also yeah. joined by uh, members of the finance committee. So I'm, uh, what's taking a long time to process is because this is a virtual meeting, I have to go and call on my colleagues person for person. So if you would unmute yourself, oh, I'm gonna ask Mike, uh, colleagues on the board. And I'm also joined by um, Mr. Mills, Mr. Kelleher, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Haggerty, and Mrs. Hurlbut from the Finance Committee for these budget hearings. And Mr. Gilberto, was there anyone else from Finance that I might be missing? There's someone on an iPhone. I don't know if that's someone from the Finance Committee. I know uh, Richard Johnson was with us, must have um, been. Um, Okay. Out of the meeting, and now I've just readmitted him, so I believe he's coming back in. Okay, good. Oh, I see him. Okay, and Mr. Johnson. All right. So first, let's just let me just go to the members of the select board if you have any questions. Mr. Studo. Mr. Studo's all set. Mr. Walner. Um, I just wanted to say, Maureen, I, I regret hearing that you're going to be leaving us. Um, I've always been impressed with your confidence and your control of the issues and the facts concerning parks and rec so um, I, I think all your dream team members will miss you and i know the town will as well so uh, we wish you best going forward um i'm just a little everything went pretty fast so is it an ad you're asking for and should the dpw be uh chiming in here about the request <clears throat> Well, that's something that um, right now we get a subsidy from the town and they, um, what they do is they give it to the enterprise account. So it would be, I think, for the finance uh, department or committee to decide whether they'd even want to address the opportunity to give that to us or if they'd want to increase our subsidy or would they want to move that over to the DPW. So I think there's, if indeed it was something that they wanted to do, uh, they have a few different ways to do it. Okay, all right, so this is moving money around just to which budget is coming out of, basically. It could be, it could be put into a, a increase our subsidy, as I called it at request number two, or uh, the way that um, the position number one is, it is in the DPW budget. Um, that's the way they've set it up. It's in the DPW budget. So they've kind of put it in there. So it isn't fragmented 
Um, so um, it's still, um, I'm not sure how they'd want to do it if they were to so approve it. Okay. Well, um, Parks and Rec has always been extremely active and proactive. And, you know, uh, just from my point of view, uh, congratulations to the entire department for doing a great job, especially during tough times. And let's hope open up, everything opens up sooner than later so you can get back on track. We're hoping. Thanks, Mr. Walner. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, again, Maureen, congratulations. You know, sorry you're going. Sorry you're leaving again. Yeah. It's certainly a loss to us and a gain for you. And, and please enjoy retirement. And uh, you've earned it. And uh, nothing but good wishes for you. Um, just to the to the town administrator, maybe the finance director. We got a presentation from the DPW. I don't recall this being factored in. No, um, it's it's not factored in. I the only thing I I did not go to them and ask for them to be in their budget. I don't think it was my place to do that. I think it's my request here and for the town to decide if it's so suited. Um, and if they approve it, would it be funded to our subsidy or to them? If it's again, so approved. So it would yeah, be- My question, I, mean, I, I know this isn't done in a vacuum either. It isn't done without discussions. And you know, I don't think, I didn't, I didn't see any surprise look on uh, the town administrator's face or Liz's face, you know, uh, as far as with the request that you're putting in here. Um, but as far as, uh, again, this is the town administrator, where are we, where are we looking at? What are we headed? Uh, what, what do you see as Mr. a possibility? Gilberto, um, do you have, do you want to weigh in on that? Um, if that, if this is a possibility for funding where that funding would be coming from or how that would be funded. Sure, and this is something that, that's been occurring in discussions, um, at least in my tenure, and I'm sure before that as well. Um, Maureen's done a great job of, of outlining, to me, you know, exactly what portion of their budget is parks related and um, you know, able to be enjoyed by the community at large, and you know, what, what, what component is recreation in nature and more um, program and fee-based. Um, so there definitely has been a conversation going on about, about that, and um, you know, she has, you know, for the reasons she's identified, put forth this as a request um, for parks and recreation. And um, my best response right now is to say that um, you did not see it factored in the DPW budget. So this would be an increase in a general fund request um, in one way or the other of funding. And it's something that we'll consider along with all of the requests that we've seen. Um, in terms of the so-called crystal ball, that'll be a presentation the finance director will make um, after the hearings this evening uh, where you'll get an update. Um, you're gonna hear that we have um, uh, roughly on paper about $850,000 challenge in the municipal operating budget right now that we need to work through. And as we've done in, in recent years, the finance director and I will do our best to, and we will get that number to be balanced in a, a way that this board and the finance committee can consider. Um, and we'll certainly take the request into consideration as we do that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. And Mr. O'Leary, any other questions? And just another comment that, you know, as, as far as the challenges over the really just the last year here. Um, you and Lynn and your team, as you put it, have certainly uh, risen to the occasion and uh, the level of communication has been exceptional. You know, there's been a lot of outreach, uh, a lot of uh, creativity uh, to keep people engaged and, uh, of all age levels and to be congratulated for that. And it's greatly appreciated by everybody in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mr. Mr. Leary. Um, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, I'm on you, right? Uh, I, I would also just um, like to say what a big loss it's going to be to lose you. Maureen, I was um, able to sit on a committee with you and Marty and Rita, the open land. And um, it was my first opportunity to really get to know you. And I was very impressed. So hate to see you go, but wish you all the luck. And um, all my questions about that position were, have been answered by everyone else. So I'm all set. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna um, jump over to the finance team to see if the finance committee has any questions. Mr. Mills? Uh, no questions, thank you. Okay. Mr. Kelleher? Um, just a comment, a couple of comments. One, Maureen, thank you for, for, the, for the job you've done. I've been working with you as, as liaison to Parks and Rec for the last several years and uh, you're always prepared and uh, uh, and do a good job. With respect to this request for additional funding, whichever way it comes, 
uh, I would I would echo Mr. Gilberto's comments that it, it's it's got to go into the into the consideration um, right. with everything else that that's, that's facing us this year, um, so that we come up with a balanced budget. So I would yeah. I would withhold any any opinion on that until we see just how things are shaping out. But thank you for the work you've done, and, and please enjoy your retirement. Thank you, Mr. Kelleher, Mr. Bailey. I have no questions. Mr. Hegarty? All set. Miss, Mrs. Hurlbut? Um, yeah, through uh, you to the town administrator. Um, is this a DPW employee that would um, work with Parks and Rec, is that a new hire in the DPW or would it be, I should say, a new hire or would it be? Uh, um, a shell game for an existing employee. And I don't mean that in a pejorative way. It's the latter. It's not a new body. It's a person who's already here and so working. It would be funded differently. The way it's funded or billed or whatever else. Okay, Correct. thank yeah. you. And, and, and oh, I think relieve pressure on the enterprise. Okay. And um, through the chair to uh, Maureen Stevens, don't go! For <laughs> <laughs> reading, oh, right. whispering in your ear. <laughs> All right, and Mr. Johnson, no questions? Okay, and, and then just for me from the chair, congratulations on your retirement. And it's amazing all of the things that we do as a town. Our, our parks are one of the most significant draws to moving here and staying here. And they're beautifully, they're beautifully maintained. And everything from the national night out, which we, was in the distant past that we can't seem to, you know, we almost don't remember due to COVID to the moving wall that was brought here to having our town meetings outdoors during COVID to just uh -huh. maintaining everything. It's amazing how much of that effort is due in no small measure to you and your dream team. And we thank you so much for everything that you have done. And hopefully you'll, Hopefully you'll stick around <laughs> in some way. We'll, cap we'll capture you in some way, I hope. After you maybe do a few fun things and you're going you're gonna to come back because we can tell this is, this is a labor of love for you. So, and you do have a great, a great team. So thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we are, oh, Mr. Mr. Gilberto, I see you have your hand up. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do want to acknowledge, just as you stated, all of the work of Parks and Recreation over the past year. Um, I think it, I think many of you know, as you just stated, they were so instrumental in us being able to pull off um, two outdoor town meetings, um, you know, to the point that we were very confident in our ability to do so again this coming June and had no problem with recommending that to the select board. And so I do want to recognize Maureen and uh, Marty for, for their work, um, you know, Brian uh, and Mike as well for their help as well. And to Lynn, um, Nancy, and, and Maria, who, um, you know, got things open very early on for, for their programming. They were one of the first um, places you could go, um, especially for those with children, uh, to offer, offer recreational programming. And they did it quietly. They did it safely without any issues. And uh, I, I do want to commend them for their efforts as well. Um, and I'll offer further comments about Maureen's service at a time down the road. But Maureen, um, thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Tilton, go ahead. Um, I'm giving my notice because Maureen's leaving. <laughs> uh -oh. just, just kidding. Uh -oh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, she's tremendous. And uh, we're, uh, this town's very fortunate enough to uh, have Maureen here for so, so long. And um, she's the best. And um, the town should be proud of everything she's done for this town. That's all I just want to say. She knows that. For sure. With her proud. team. For sure proud. With the team. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. And our next uh, next department is the Hillview. And I did see Mr. Hemi's here. Hey. Yeah, I'm here. Mr. Hemi. Welcome, Mr. Hemi. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, the, the Hillview um, 
unlike, unfortunately, a lot of departments, we actually had uh, a nice uptick thanks to uh, our friend at uh, COVID. Um, the staff at uh, GFMI did a tremendous job in not only uh, living to the regulations that were you know, very difficult at times, but dealing with the volume of people that came out to play golf. Uh, the golf industry was the one industry that really did um, pick up from you know, this COVID disaster that happened. Uh, as far as the budget is concerned for next year, um, it's very similar to this year with um, some additional spending that we're looking at. The spending is due to the fact that uh, the operator of the banquet facility is no longer going to be running the banquet facility. So we are going to be on the hook for the uh, utilities for that product for, for the facility, as well as for some repairs and things that are going to need to happen. We are actively looking to replace the person. But in today's day and age and the ability to have big functions, uh, that's going to be extremely difficult. Um, we are looking and working with, with Michael, uh, who's given us permission to kind of separate the, the pub from the banquet facility to see if there is some interest in someone in taking over just the pub. So we will actively go after that. Um, we will continue to invest in the crown jewel of the golf course. Um, we again have uh, capital that we've asked for to continue to upgrade our equipment that is extremely old, uh, the lawnmowers and, and various things that are needed to keep the course in probably the best shape that it's ever been in. Um, so overall, you know, it, it, was a, it was a tough year as far as being able to manage through the COVID but we were very blessed that we did have people that were coming out and it was the one activity that, you know, people were able to do and people wanted to do. All set. Yes. Let's have, let's um, just kind of go to my colleagues on the board to see if there's any questions. Mr. Strudo, none, Mr. Walner. I can just say, I, I, I love your course. We were cross country skiing there just a few weeks ago and it was fabulous. So thank you for that. And I can't believe how many people go out doing cross country skiing, yeah. uh, snowshoeing. I mean, it's just a really, it's a fantastic resource. I don't golf, but I, I appreciate it during the winter very much. So thank you for what you do. Mm -hmm. Mr. O'Leary. I uh, just a few comments. I mean, obviously this year has been very challenging for, <clears throat> for the commission. And again, maybe it wasn't so much economically, but uh, I tell you, there are a whole host of issues that had to be addressed in coordination with the administration, the Board of Health uh, early on during the COVID and being able to um, open the course, operate it safely. And as Mr. Hemi pointed out, uh, GFMI did a fantastic job of coordinating the efforts and getting the uh, methodology that was going to be employed to approved through the Board of Health uh, with a significant amount of oversight and also uh, um, so we say constructive criticism uh, to, to make things work uh, work well, and, uh, and again, it just uh, it was fairly seamless, you know, as far as keeping the course up and operating, and, and how they did it. And they did an excellent job. As far as the facility itself, obviously the challenges of uh, New York Ventures being unable to uh, run their facility um, again resulted in uh, the, the license agreement expiring or not being renewed. And uh, that, again, puts a financial strain on the commission and their budget to uh, sustain the operations of that building and the, and the maintenance of the facility itself. And it's always been looked upon as, you know, if we can get someone in there to operate the function hall, you know, to pay the utilities and maintain the building, you know, it's a win for the town. But it's a significant undertaking. It's a significant expense. And um, they factor that into their budget. And again, if they're able to uh, get a... Uh, First of all, a short-term operator to operate the pub that will certainly help out offset the uh, the cost of maintaining the facility and doing the repairs and maintenance that are, that are necessary. But the commission has put in an extraordinary amount of uh, additional time this year in order to adjust to the challenges. And again, for that, uh, again, as the liaison, um, had a lot of contact with them over the last uh, 12 months. And um, I appreciate uh, their volunteerism, their effort, their professionalism. And uh, again, the maintenance of that uh, uh, the, the enterprise uh, has been extraordinary and they've done a terrific job over the years and each and every member of the commission is to be 
uh, thanked and congratulated. And Peter, uh, thank you for uh, watching the numbers and keeping everybody on track and making sure that uh, nobody gets any good ideas as far as uh, you know how we're going to spend the money because it's it's still tenuous. You know, we uh, the cost of operating there is is, is growing. You know, um, GFMI has to pay, so the contract with GFMI is, is growing, and therefore the margins are a little bit slimmer for us, and the reserves aren't going to be quite as great. So we're going to be conscious of it, and uh, the commission's done a great job of being uh, very cognizant of that, and it's greatly appreciated. Okay, thank you, Ms. Grohler. And Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? No, no, no questions. Just um, I, I would love to see somebody take that pub over. Uh, when we moved here in... 94 somebody used to run that pub and i'm not sure who it was and um we used to walk over there and have dinner and a drink and walk home and it was just a great little place to go so i would i'd love to see that revived again it would be great good luck with that thank you okay. um and from the finance team any questions mr mills no question for me could you well said mr kelleher uh, yeah, just just a couple. Um, I, I understand that there are are costs to maintaining the building when it when it's not in use. I, I don't understand the why the electricity is so high, or what what we're doing with the professional services. And I'm sure there's a, there's a good answer for it, but it's not obvious. Uh, if it's going to be essentially dark, except for perhaps using the pub, why is the electricity? going to be as, as so let, and, let me, as it yeah. probably has always been when it was being operated as a function hall like, is the question yeah. comment so in that electricity number is is all the utilities for the pub so not only electricity but the heat and all that so what you're seeing is that's what we used to bill out to the people that were working or had leased the property so those costs now have to be absorbed by us. They're, for ease of use, they've all been put into electricity, but it also includes the heat um, and any uh, water and any other utilities. Uh, you're correct, it's gonna be dark, but we still have to maintain the facility. We still have to put the heat on. We're not looking to, you know, we're hopeful in the future to be able to use the facility again. So we wanna maintain it so that we can do that. Um, as far as the professional services, that is the contract with GFMI that continues to escalate, as Mr. O'Leary talked about. Yeah. So it's not only their um, monthly management fee, but in there as well is their, their um, commission for booking additional business. And given that the revenue has increased, there'll be some additional commission that will be going to them as well. Are there any assumptions about revenue from the pub in any of None. Case? None. Okay. No. We, um, you know, if, if we can find someone to, to take in and run an, a nice operation to benefit the, the town and the golf course, we would be probably willing to do it just for utilities, just you know, at this point. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mr. Keller. Mr. Bailey? No and questions. And Mr. Haggerty, any questions? Mrs. Hurlbut, none. Mr. Johnson, we are all set, I think. Okay, we are all set, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, we have our budget presentation from our treasurer collector. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good, good evening, I should say, not afternoon. <laughs> so um, I do all the collections for the treasurer, um, for the collections of the town, um, water bills, trash bills, um, motor vehicle bills, um, collections from all the departments, deposits from all the departments. Um, my treasurer's budget um, only has my staff, my um, assistant treasurer in there, her salary, and then my stipend. Um, the majority of my budget is the collector's budget, which has um, two staff members and then a vacant, um, a vacancy, which I'm trying to get restored um, for fiscal year 22. 
Um, I can share my screen and show you the presentation here. Um, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, so my justification to have the, um, the vacant position restored is um, the amount of bills that we have go out quarterly. So we have approximately 5,600 real estate bills that go out um, quarterly, as well as 500 personal property, 5,000 um, water and trash go out quarterly. And then last year we um, billed out 17,000 um, motor vehicle bills. And then, like I stated before, the departmental, departmental um, deposits. And um, so that's why I'm asking for the position to be reinstated. Um, my staff, myself and my staff have worked um, numerous hours. Um, uh, they are doing overtime for their time that they're, um, that they're uh, the extra time, sorry. Um, and I mean, it's 7.30 right now and my staff is still here trying to process all the mail that we have at this, at this time. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any questions regarding the vacancy. Um, I, oh, Not a question, but an explanation. Okay. Oh, sure, Mr. Colberto. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, through you. Um, so th this, for, for those who don't recall, this position um, happened to be vacant at the time we were finalizing the FY21 budget last May and June. And it, along with a position in the DPW and a vacant position in my office, um, were held vacant, um, not funded in this current fiscal year. And I think, as I've said previously in the discussions, uh, those remain um, priorities number one, one, and one for restoration um, in the FY22 budget, uh, if funding uh, um, allows, um, really for the very reasons that Mary Ann just described, that, that there is definitely a need um, this is an office that, that has been open the entire time, providing critical services here in the town hall because it's really the only way to do so um, on, uh, on behalf of the town um, to keep um, our revenue flowing and, and so that the town can pay its bills. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Ms. Rourke, I don't know if you, did you need to add anything to that? No, oh, we can't hear you, Liz. You <laughs> You need a whiteboard and hold up the whiteboard. We'll have to read it. Okay. You might have to sign out and sign back in, but um, I th uh, did you um, did you have anything else you wanted to add to your pre budget presentation before we go to questions? Um, I just I would just like to say um, there was I'm adding another hundred dollars to my dues and memberships, and that's just for. Um, some dues that have gone up. So that was the only other um, increase that I had in my budget. Um, like, okay. Mike, like Mike had, the town administrator had uh, mentioned, you know, um, we have been open the whole time receiving payments then. Um, there's been someone in the office, you know, every single day since this whole, everything has happened. Um, the bills are still getting, you know, processed. They're, they're getting mailed out, they're getting, um, posted to the accounts. So, I mean, the bills are coming in and we're still keeping up, trying to keep up, I should say. Um, you know, it, it is hard, you know, but my staff has been wonderful. I can't thank them enough for all the time that they're putting in. Okay, thank you. Let's go to questions in case anyone has any questions. Mr. Studo? No, all set. Mr. Walner? No, just thanks for all the extra effort you put in during the year to get the bills out and keep the revenue going for the town, that's very important. And, you know, um, if there's a way to fund that extra person or reinstate that person, that'd be a good thing from my point of view. So thank you for the extra time. And please tell your staff that. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, again, just a great appreciation for all the extra effort. And it has been extra effort uh, being put in to process everything. And, uh, as far as the collections, I guess Liz will talk to us about that later on, <laughs> how that's going. But, but really, it, it wouldn't be possible without your staff and your efforts. And uh, obviously, there's a need. There was a need last year. You know, and we just uh, because of the unknown, we weren't able to fill it. So I, I think it, 
the town administrator said it's, it's a high priority. Okay, thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Before, let me just go back to Ms. Rourke. Go ahead, Ms. Rourke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good evening, everybody. I just wanted to, you know, echo what the town administrator uh, mentioned about the treasurer collector's office, um, that they, you know, were in the building um, the entire time the, the building has been closed as it's not a job that can be done remotely. Um, so I want to, you know, thank Marianne herself, because um, she was there as well, supporting her staff. And I want to thank um, all of her staff, um, you know, for going the extra mile and, and, and being there, um, you know, because it is our main revenue resource for the town. And, you know, this position is, is is vital to the department. Um, you know, they they are working countless hours, not just, you know, when, right now that motor vehicle bills are on the street or water and trash, it's, it's, it's a constant flow of, of payments that come into the office. So, you know, I wanna, I wanna thank, you know, um, everybody that works in the uh, treasurer collector's office as well as Marianne. Um, I also wanna note that um, this position has, been in place since the very early 90s. Um, so it is vital to um, the town's operations. And it was only held vacant due to a, a transfer last year. So, you know, it is something that is definitely a, a necessity to the town. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? No, no questions, just a thank you. Thank you for being there and, you know, carrying on during COVID. I know it's difficult. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go to the finance committee, Mr. Mills. I don't have any questions, thank you. Mr. Kelleher. No questions, thank you. Mr. Bailey. No questions, thanks. Mr. Haggerty is with us, but he's muted. But if you have any questions, unmute, Mr. Haggerty. Ms. Hurlbut? No questions. And Mr. Johnson is with us, but he's also muted. So if you have any questions, <laughs> unmute. Okay, and I'll just echo what my colleagues have said. Thank you very much. When everybody else was afraid to go out of their homes, you were still there making sure we were running, keeping the continuity of services available to our residents. And we all really appreciate that job that you and your entire department did. So thank you. Thank you. I will let them know. Okay, our next budget is the assessor. We have Mrs. Carboni here. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time and having our annual budget meetings. They're a little different than we're used to. Uh, I was thinking today, you know, I really kind of miss having them in room 14. But either way, we've, we've managed to get over what I think is the hurdle of the COVID pandemic. And as we've just discussed this past year for the finance department, we have had many hurdles, but we've done them. We've, we've gotten done everything in every office that has needed to be done. My budget's really pretty simple this year. Um, we have, we're in the midst of a revaluation so we had gone out for an RFP. So the $10,830 that I usually put in my budget has been omitted because it works into the RFP. So just briefly, I'm just going to go through, you know, what this office does actually do. Uh, we generate more than 72% of the revenue. We maintain all property values for both real estate and personal. We are the granting authority of all personal exemptions. 
And as to date, we've defended our own values at the Appellate Tax Board. We have not had to go out and hire any professionals to help us do this. Uh, with that being said, that's a, a huge savings to the town, but we've managed to do it. Our abatements are actually pretty low. We had a total of 19 this year, which is a pat on the back to our office. And, you know, I definitely thank my department employees for all their hard work to make that happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next slide. The, the assessor's office accomplishments. So 2021 was the completion of our total camera conversion. I am here to tell you it is my last conversion in my career. Uh, it's my fifth. I, they're a lot of work. And we did manage to get it done. We got it done timely. And we really did a super job. As I just stated, having only 19 abatement applications is the true definition of knowing you did a good job. With that being said, getting through the conversion timely, we still managed to produce the tax bill on time and generate our new growth. Fiscal 2022, we're going into another roller skate year and it's, it's gonna be a double duty with a full certification. I did meet with my advisor this morning. We're on track for everything. I tend to certify our values usually about two months earlier than what most towns do, but you just never know what is going to cross your path. So that being said, our work plan is in, our dates are scheduled, and to complete a full certification, it really takes us, we've already started, it's February to October. Uh, real briefly on the assessor's budget explanation, the professional service budget is reduced due to the RFP and the revaluation. The postage was reduced after analyzing and looking at what we had spent last year in current to date. I reduced it by a, a modest amount, the $50. Travel is obvious, we do everything by Zoom. So even our assessors meetings that I would normally travel for, um, we're doing by Zoom. So I felt it only right to reduce the travel. And that's, that's really the end of the explanation that I have. I don't know if there are any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, Let's go to our, my colleagues, Mr. Studo, any questions? <clears throat> no, I'll set Mr. Walner. Um, uh, yeah, just one question. I'm just wondering, you know, with all the billing we're doing using postage and knowing how the post office is going, uh, is there any, has there been any consideration on the town level to do more electronic billing and, you know, go through that method versus the way we're doing it now? And I'm not even, it's not even direct. I'm not putting you in the spot, Debbie Hopefully, I'm just asking an open question. Nobody has to answer. I'm just wondering about that, if that's potentially on the radar, just because, you know, we went through this technological challenge and if there was ever a time to find efficiency, this might be it. Madam Chair, may I answer what I can on that? Of course, please. Thank please you. Go uh, as far as the tax billing and mailing a, a, a legal tax bill, we do not have authority from the Department of Revenue at this time that you can do that. So there's still a lot of statutes that have been on the books forever and ever that have never been updated, that have never been changed. So with that being said, maybe COVID will get the DLS to start changing some things. 
I know correspondence wise, we do the majority of our, like if there's a question on motor vehicle or if they're sending us in documentation for an abatement, that's all done through email. So we have reduced quite a bit of our mailing. The bulk of the assessing mail um, expenditure is really for the income and expense forms. That's the majority. Cool. All right, thank you for being proactive. I appreciate it. And thanks for the work you've done. Thank you. your team as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walden. Mr. O'Leary, all set? Okay. Mrs. Gonzalez? I'm all set, thank you. All set. Okay. Um, Mr. Mills? I'm all set as well, thank you. Mr. Kelleher? Set. Good. Mr. Bailey? I'm good too. Mr. Haggerty? is muted. If you have questions, please unmute. Mrs. Hurlbut? No questions. Mr. Johnson is muted. If you have questions, please unmute. And we are also um, joined by Mr. Gamer from FinCom as well. I don't, I can, I can't, any questions? No questions here. Thank you. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carboni. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next department is information technology. And we have, what do we have here? Madam Chair, Ms. Rourke will speak to a uh, budget request. Okay. Ms. Rourke, you're muted. So again, um, I'm just gonna briefly share my screen. Um, I only have one slide for um, information technology. Um, if everybody is not aware, currently at this time, we have a vacancy with the information technology director position um, under the um, org chart for the town, the finance, um, division or director is uh, responsible for the information technology department. And so I will just briefly show you um, one, one large uh, cost driver within the IT's budget for FY22, and then we can take questions. So let me get that up and we can go from there. So uh, annually, uh, the IT's budget for professional services with data processing, which is a line item that encompasses all support fees uh, or licensing fees that we have to pay annually for all the various software um, that we have for, whether it's for computers, um, for our financial management system, for servers, whatever, ha whatever it may be, that line item covers all of those um, fees. However, this year through um, the engineering department, which houses the um, GIS coordinator, we had a request uh, for an enterprise version of ArcGIS, uh, and this was submitted through uh, a capital request. However, it didn't fit under the four corners of capital. One piece of it did, which was the cost of a physical server. Uh, however, the remaining piece, which is the annual software support fee of $31,000 did not fit in as a capital request as, as a reoccurring cost. The physical server lasts, you know, a good seven years. So that is considered a, a capital expense. Um, so that is the largest cost driver and increase to the information technologies budget. The other increases that take place within that line item our regular vendor support uh, fee increases between three and 5%. For example, Munis, uh, Tyler Technologies, which is our financial management system, uh, increases annually three to 5%. This year it's increasing 5%. 
Um, the other line item that has increased almost twenty thousand dollars, shy of twenty a dollar shy of twenty thousand dollars, is the telephone line item, and this increase um, is to align with actual expenditures that we have spent over the past three fiscal years. So um, rather than continuing to overspend that line item, we have uh, adjusted that. So those are uh, the the major cost drivers within the IT. Uh, operating budget for FY22. Thank you. Let's just see if anyone has any questions. Mr. Studo? All, all set. Mr. Walner? Nope, I don't have anything to say. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary? Um, Liz, just as far as the, the, the rotation of um, technology, that's all factored in annually as far as, uh, has that budget gone up at all? That portion of the budget? Uh, I'm not. Which piece of the budget? The piece of it in relation to you know re replacing uh, computers and, and things of that nature. So that is captured within the the capital budget, and that last year was the first year that we um, incrementally increased that uh, dollar amount to align with the increased cost of uh, laptops and servers and printers and and desktops. So yes, that, that cost has um, increased. Uh, we started out way back in 2012, 2013 with, I believe, you know, 35,000 and now we've increased that to 45,000. Um, so, you know, we, have, we, we went up a small amount on that and we are still on our five year computer replacement plan and, and it's working well. So, um, you know, thanks to the help of, um, you know, Bob Masseri, he really, he really uh, helped the town's IT department and infrastructure grow. And I, so I was just going to say, God bless Bob Masseri. So yes, no, I the foresight and the insistence on uh, yes. you know, building it up and then being able to maintain it. No, he was uh, a big supporter and help and, and guide her for, for the IT department. So I'm very grateful. All set, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, Mrs. Gonzalez? All set. Okay, Mr. Mills. Uh, just one question, was there any um, unexpected expenses this past year or any savings this past year for technology? Through you, Madam Chair, um, we had unexpected expenses uh, due to COVID this past year. Um, those unexpe unexpected expenses um, are reimbursable through the, the CARES Act. Um, and so, you know, there could be some savings. Um, however, we, you know, um, and I believe the town administrator will discuss a little later on in his report, um, but there are some things that we, we do need to um, fix uh, within the IT department. Um, so I'm not sure how much savings we will end up having, um, you know, so. Thank you. Yep, but it will be turned, it will be turned back if, if there is savings. Okay, be before I move to other members of FinCom, I have Mr. Gilberto raising his hand to give us some input. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. And just to the issue that I think many of us on the call here are, are aware of, you know, we did have some challenges with our email um, over the past uh, eight or nine days. Um, and uh, I think, as many of you know, there were, were many, there were what, there were global impacts with regard to Microsoft. Um, ours were a bit more challenging here. Um, and you know, there we had a, a vacancy in the director's position. Um, have very capable resources in the technician in the office, but we did need to enlist some outside help uh, to get us over the finish line um, last week. So there will be an expense associated with that that we're um, we're working through. Um, you know, we also I think feel that now is a good time to just um, uh, do a quick review while we're between directors of everything and make sure we know where where, where we stand with regard to our systems. And so we'll be doing that, and there may be some expense associated with that. Um, I don't think the finance director and I are concerned that we are going to be um, struggling from a resources standpoint, but um, you know there, there will be some impacts, again, not COVID related that we'll need to, to address and that we will address most likely through the June town meeting close up. And if it becomes more urgent, we'll be happy to ask Ms. Hurlbut and Mr. Kelleher for some help. 
Mr. Thank Gamer and the rest of the, the committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Good luck. Mr. Kelleher, any questions? <laughs> he was nothing. Okay. No, no Mr. Questions. Mr. Bailey? No questions. Mr. Hegarty is muted, unmute if you have questions. Mrs. Hurlbut? No questions, but as I think I've already told you, Mike, um, uh, I, I'm perfectly willing to bring before the Finance Committee anything concerning IT that you want to look into. Thank you very much. Mr. Johnson, if you have any questions, on mute. Mr. Gamer, any questions? Yeah, so um, I've always considered this also budget somewhat underfunded and I get, you know, the, the increase in phone charges, about 50,000 for software, additional software and support. I get that. I saw an increase in of 6,000 in other expenses, um, other miscellaneous. Do we know what that is for, Liz? you, Madam Chair. Um, those are various uh, computer parts and computer supplies, just the increase in the in the cost of, um, you know, uh, switches or, um, you know, we had to just different uh, video cards to for our computers to be capable to, you know, take new components, things like that. Um, you know, nothing, nothing major, but it's just the increased cost um, in, in those various items. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. No more questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rohr. Our next, um, oh, our next budget is finance and accounting. <laughs> you muted too soon, Ms. Rohr. Back again. Hey, at least I didn't lose my uh, <laughs> my my, vo my voice. <laughs> so um, I do not have a presentation for finance and accounting as it's uh, very minimal changes under the uh, finance director budget that houses um, the finance director uh, salary as well as the assistant finance director's salary. So those are the only two items that are um, housed in, in um, the finance budget. And then under accounting, um, we have, um, I have an administrative assistant and I have an accounting analyst. So those are the two salaries under accounting. And then um, we have a decrease in office supplies and just an increase in subscriptions, which is just, um, I don't know why it's, it's various dues and memberships and subscriptions kind of cross over. Um, so that's just how, how it's been categorized. And there's been a, a, a few increases in, in those, um, those items, uh, you know, cost of um, belonging to say the MGFOA, um, which is the, uh, or the MMAAA, you know, any of those organizations that are uh, accounting or, you know, government financial official organizations. So um, that's, that's really it. Um, and then just the increase in non-union wages is um, a merit increase. Um, so, and co cost of living, that's all. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rohr. Let's take qu any questions, Mr. Studo. Mr. Walner. Uh, no questions. Mr. O'Leary. No questions. Mrs. Gonzalez. No questions. Mrs. Hurlbut. No questions. Mr. Mills. No questions. Mr. Kelleher. No questions. Mr. Johnson, if you have questions, you may unmute. Mr. Bailey. No questions. Mr. Gamer. No questions. Mr. Haggerty, if you have questions, you can unmute. And I will just say from the chair, this was the year of all years. This year was the year of all years where 
our town needed to rely on our finance director who was who stepped up to the plate around the clock work with our TA with with the team with the TA's team the management team to keep everything running and I want to say thank you I, I think I can't speak for my colleagues and saying thank you for everything that you did this year for the things that you already always do but this was the year of all years where we needed someone with uh, the, the most elite professional skills in accounting and financing and being on top of everything that you needed to be on top of with your team. So we, we say thank you to you for that. Thank you very much. And I, I couldn't do it without my team. So, you know, um, we, we are a great team as, as, as the town as a whole. So, you know, I, I thank everybody. So thank you. Well, and we thank you for being thank a great you. team leader and a great finance director. So, all right. And for a, a rather short presentation, our next <laughs> budget is human resources. And we do have Mr. Collins. I did see yeah. you join us. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, in brief, the, the HR department consists of myself and Allison Olson, our benefits coordinator. And we are the folks who serve uh, the public servants who serve the community of North Reading. And for us to be successful is to make them successful in delivering service and making it a better community for folks to live and work in. Um, over the last year, we've had 53 openings. We've had 217 applications and resumes submitted, 67 interviews and we've hired 35. So about 95% of the uh, positions have been filled. Uh, amongst the three open full-time positions are the uh, IT director that was just mentioned, as well as the DPW director, and a, a single uh, DPW position. Uh, we now have two uh, part-time positions that are empty, that were, well, will be, that were once the uh, single position uh, taken place by Jane. And Jane can actually, when she leaves, say that she did the work of two people. Um, moving on in terms of our budget, the only significant uh, increase uh, that we're seeking from last year to this year is tuition reimbursement. And uh, what a segue uh, it was from you, Madam Chair. Uh, the tuition reimbursement reflects a request uh, from the finance uh, director uh, a couple of years, two years ago, she took part in a program that I'm in right now where the town has the opportunity. It's a competitive program through Suffolk University. You have to apply. Uh, the town has to back you. And for the sum of $2,250, uh, the, a successful candidate gets $14,000 worth of graduate school credits and gets a certificate in municipal leadership and finance. And Liz did that two years ago. Uh, that is four of the five courses that she took are then uh, able to be transferred over for an MPA, uh, which would uh, again strengthen our bench. And th the request for the $18,195 uh, takes into account uh, one year, two courses per semester, uh, so that she doesn't lose the four credits that she earned two years ago. This was submitted last year. Uh, and was cut. And uh, because of the fact that there is a, a time frame for which, uh, or sort of a, a sell by date, I guess, for the, uh, the ability to roll over those uh, four courses into this, that's why the request you see again before you tonight. Um, and that's, that's the only really significant increase. Everything else we've tried to keep uh, either at or below uh, prior levels. Um, we, but we've looked at creative ways of recruiting uh, in order to keep costs down. Uh, and again, I, I'd like to really single out Allison in terms of uh, over the last years, but particularly this partic uh, incredibly trying year, she's truly stepped up. She's uh, increased her uh, abilities, taken a lot of uh, online courses and the like, but also worked in terms of um, when I first got here, we would both uh, conduct a lot of the interviews and now she's really branched off on a lot of the things she's doing now. So she's, she's sort of an unsung hero uh, within uh, Town Hall. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Right, we're going to see if anyone has any questions. Mr. Walner. 
Um, I, uh, just two things, uh, Bob and I and uh, Ms. Gonzalez, we all uh, had an opportunity to do some union contract negotiations. And we have another round coming up right now. And I always consider the best agreement is one that's fair on all sides. And I think Bob really led us down that path to make that happen. So um, speaks well to the town, speaks well to the people that are part of the union. And I appreciate uh, that approach. So I've enjoyed working with you on that. I'll also say that, you know, in the summer, we put together some summits on um, uh, social justice. And uh, Bob came to those meetings and was a participant and, you know, uh, was positively reflecting on the town's interest in trying to step up and do the right thing as well. So um, I appreciate you stepping out of your normal world and coming out at night and uh, sitting and listening for a few hours to everything that was going on. So on both fronts, thank you very much for all you do. Thanks, My Mr. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lana. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, again, just positive comments in relation to uh, having worked with Bob now for a number of years and a whole host of issues, whether it be negotiations, uh, personnel issues. And uh, I think what's a fine testament to Bob and, and Allison both is that they uh, command a significant amount of respect from uh, the personnel, town employees, and the school department. And uh, it's critical you know, that those relationships are, uh, are respectful and professional and um, well regarded, you know, kudos to you, Bob, and just the way you are anyway. Uh, but again, as far as contract negotiations, uh, it brings a wealth of knowledge and experience. And uh, to Mr. Walner's point, uh, you know, working out a fair deal for both sides and uh, being fair with everybody and giving us good advice to and guidance along the way. So uh, certainly appreciate uh, all your input. I appreciate your comments and your honesty with me at times, which is great. And uh, Again, keep up the good work and thank Allison and um, appreciate it very much. I will. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez? Uh, I would just, I would like to echo my colleagues' thoughts and um, yeah, add, you know, it was my first time ever being involved in a union negotiation and um, Mr. Collins, he, he just couldn't have been a better person to be with during that, you know, just made it very understandable and answered questions and was so patient. And so, yeah, thank you very much. He is definitely a plus for us. Mr. Studo, all set. Mrs. Hurlbut. Um, nice job to both Bob and Allison uh, during a tricky year, um, but I have no further questions. Mr. Mills. No questions, thank you. Mr. Kelleher? No questions, thank you. Okay, Mr. Gamer? None here, thank you. Mr. Bailey? All set. Okay, and if Mr. Haggerty and Mr. Johnson have questions? No questions, cannot... thank you. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, and I'll just, just echo the same sentiments as my colleagues that, you know, you really bring a well honed skill set to the table and it, it helps us out tremendously with everything that we do. And, you know, another thing I wanted to make note of is um, we saw the HR director at our town meetings as a volunteer helping, helping people, you know, again, at a time when people were concerned to show up, we appreciate you stepping up and stepping outside of what you really need to do for us to just be a volunteer and help us out through this really difficult year. So thank you. That's just one example, but we really appreciate everything you do for the, for the, for the town and for the town employees. It gives us a good perspective on things when you're uh, helping us with things. So thank you. All right, so our next um, budget is the Public Safety Administration. Madam Chair. Mr. Mr. Gilberto. If it would be okay with you and the other attendees, I have a single brief presentation to encompass public safety administration, town administrator, select board and town council that I'll go through and perhaps we could just take questions if, if any at the conclusion. So public safety, town administrator, select board and town council. And, right. and I think that that would be okay provided it's one minute or less. I can be, I can be quick. <laughs> Only kidding. Go ahead, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you. I'm going to um, going to try to share my screen here. 
and is everyone seeing a full page there? Okay. So I'll go through again the four budgets, Public Safety Administration, Town Administrator, Select Board, and Town Council. Um, I prepare all four of those uh, as the department head for those departments and submit them for consideration. For uh, Public Safety Administration, um, you know, I, I, we've talked a lot about the response to the pandemic, um, but the positions played a key role in the COVID-19 pandemic response for the town and it doesn't often get identified. Um, yeah, the chief in this position has provided day-to-day -day oversight and guidance to the health department in responding to the public health emergency uh, between Board of Health meetings, um, has assisted in communicating with the public on matters re relating to the public health emergency, um, oversaw altering the operations of the police fire building and health departments to continue providing services during the public health emergency, particularly last spring, um, and had, was a very important advisor to me relative to overall municipal operations in response to the public health emergency. So I know he's not here this evening, but I would like to thank Chief Murphy and his role as public safety director for all of his assistance along the way um, in, uh, in keeping things um, going and keeping things operating. Um, the request is to level fund um, the um, Public Safety Administration Department going into fiscal year 2022. And um, my next slide, the um, Looks like the slide's not changing here. Let's see if I get that to work. There we go. Can everyone see a slide that says Town Administrator Select Board? Yes. Um, so the, this uh, request would restore the project manager grant coordinator position that the Select Board had um, um, supported and that was um, approved in the FY 2020 operating budget. Um, we're uh, preparing to fill the position and ultimately held it vacant for fiscal year 2021 as a cost savings measure. And uh, I am um, requesting that it be funded again um, this budget would also establish a standalone recording secretary position as proposed, but required to be eliminated in fiscal year 2021. We're actually advertising that position right now um, with uh, Jane's uh, de uh, departure. And I thank Karen uh, Mulberg, Mulberg for being here this evening to help us out. Um, so if you know, those who are watching at home, it is uh, up on the town website. If you just go to northreadingma.gov and click on jobs, it'll take you right to a page that will show that vacancy. Um, we are also in the midst of evaluating the overall staffing and responsibilities of the office in light of the upcoming vacancy um, and the anticipated new hire um, through the grant position, um, examining if there's existing capacity elsewhere in the organization for anywhere of those responsibilities. If there are any changes to be recommended, they would be presented during the budget reconciliation um, in, in April. And that's something that uh, we continue to work on. Finally, with regard to town council, we are requesting level funding um, for um, fiscal year 2022 compared to fiscal year 2021 um, for that budget. And that concludes my presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Uh, Mr. Studo? No, no questions. Mr. Walner? Um, you know, we're obviously very, intimately aware of everything you're doing. Um, and it wouldn't be the first time I would be saying anything you can do to help yourself out to uh, um, handle all the many hundreds of issues that go by your desk appears like every day would be a good thing. So it would be good for the town, it'd be good for the people and it's good for you as well to have the same job. So anyways, that's all I have to say. Thanks for all you do and for your team that's with you. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary. Um, yeah, I, you know, as far as the staffing levels and uh, realignment of uh, responsibilities, as far as the secretarial position, you know, obviously now's the time to take a look at it. And I'm glad you are uh, evaluating that, you know, and it, to Mr. Walner's point, uh, you know, I still believe, and again, when we took on the human resources position, I think that, and I meant to comment on this, uh, I'm sure that's been a great relief for you to have the uh, competent assistance of, of Bob to assist you. But for years, there wasn't a position there for that. So, uh, there's, there's a definite need for additional assistance uh, for your office. And um, as I said before, I'll say it again, don't be shy about asking for it. In relation to the town council's budget being level funded, um, my interest is in the, uh, the 40B uh, application and the additional resources that we have um, allocated for that. And 
included in the budget? Will that also have further assistance, financial assistance to support that ongoing effort? Madam Chair, through you. Mr. Delgado. Um, so no, it would not be in the operating budget, but um, you have not seen it yet because we haven't presented it, but we do have an article for the June town meeting to fund that uh, much in the way we did last June. Um, and we anticipate recommending uh, funding that so that it will continue. I mean, you, you've seen from the reports, we are, I think, in good shape with regard to what's available from last year's appropriation, but I, I do foresee us asking for additional funds, but it would be outside the operating budget. Okay, that's good. I just want to make sure that uh, it's going to be included somewhere because this is going to be a long haul yeah. and uh, there's going to be additional expenses associated with it. And if you're not going to factor it into the operating budget, then my next comment was let's have another article. Uh, which yes. is carried forward. So that, that's terrific. All right. Uh, and finally, as far as, you know, the public safety director, and again, Chief Murphy has been instrumental in playing a key role over the past year as far as um, addressing all the whole host of issues along with the town administrator and the rest of the, the staff at town hall. Um, and, and again, I think, Michael, you've done an extraordinary job of uh, shepherding us through this uh, difficult time and going you know, to be congratulated for all the uh, successes that you've had uh, facing the challenges and uh, and I know it's taken an extraordinary uh, toll on on your time and your family's time and uh, it's not over yet but we're hopefully over the over the hurdle so but again you put in an additional amount of time and again the distraction is unbelievable so yeah meantime we continue to operate well and kudos to your staff and everybody that you that works under you and you've done a terrific job thank you Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you for all you do. You and everything, everything you do. Thank you. Mrs. Hurlbut. There's a huge problem in coming after Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> because there's virtually nothing left that anybody can say. Uh, but the town administrator, needles to say, and as everyone knows, has done an amazing job um, this past year and, and prior. This is not a, this is an exceptional year in what he was called to, for to do, but it's not exceptional an exceptional year as far as his uh, display of varied talents in running this town. So congratulations, Mike, and thank you, Kate. Thank you, Abby. Mr. Mills? No, uh, no comments from me. Thank you, appreciate the work. Thanks. Mr. Kelleher? Tough coming after both of them. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, you do a great job and I, I appreciate all that you do and all the hard work you put in. And uh, I think we're, we're a better town for, your, for being here and for what you do. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson? No questions, thank you. Mr. Bailey? I'm all set, thanks. Mr. Gamer? No questions, thank you for doing what you do, Michael. Thanks, Ben. And Mr. Haggerty, I think is still muted. Uh, if you want to comment or question, unmute. And I'll, I'll also try to follow Mr. O'Leary and Mrs. Roma because this is the one time during budget hearing that you know we're prolonging this by giving you thanks and praise, but this is our opportunity to do it. I'm gonna use Abby's word it, exceptional, exceptional circumstances requires an exceptional leader. And that is what you are. I, I like to tell people you're the quintessential professional and you handle everything with such composure, humility, all the virtues that we would need in a, in a leader. You, th these, are, these are things that you have. And so we really appreciate everything you've done to keep this, to keep this ship righted during this really unprecedented time and you've surrounded yourself with an amazing team that sort of emanates the same qualities that you have so we are really in good hands as a town with you managing for us and we really appreciate everything you do and you have done in this time you're just like everyone else in the town with a family with people you worry about people you're caring for and yet you're still here uh, around the clock for us, worrying about us and taking care of us and taking care of the citizens and your 
public service messages are fabulous. And I think that anything that you ask as far you, you are conservative in, in your requests and it would be helpful for us to support you in those requests, just for you to be able to focus your attention on your mission for the town over and above everything else that you're doing for the town. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, because this is our chance to thank you. And um, that's it, we can, we can, I think, move on. How about an appreciation for doubling our uh, stipends and salaries too? <laughs> <laughs> Did he do that? <laughs> I guess the, I, I guess you didn't notice because it wasn't in there. We get all the big zero, yeah, two zeros instead. Of, <laughs> there you go. You got it, Steve. Right. You get two big zeros instead of one. All right, it's a labor of love for us as well. So, so we're lucky to be able to serve with you managing the town for us and thank your you. team. So thank you, and thank and thank Mrs. Gilberto. <laughs> we must do that as well. All right, so I think we can move on to public comment. If there is anyone here that wishes to speak for public comment, I see none. Do you, Mr. Gilberto? I don't see anyone. Don't see any chat either. All set? Okay. Let's move on to a review of the list of articles for the June 2021 annual town meeting. Madam Chair. Through you, I'm, I'd like to share my screen if I could. Oh, great, perfect. Um, and I'll just I'll run through the list. I'll, I'll try to move quickly, with the focus being on the um, the articles that are sort of outside of the routine. All right, so I will again share my screen. Okay, can everybody see a? Um, sheet that begins with the annual town meeting, June 2021. Yes. Great. So um, we have a, a total of 30 articles that are pending right now for um, this upcoming town meeting. Um, I'm going to move very quickly through the first um, 20 articles because they are, have um, all but become routine at this point. They include various actions that we do at the end of the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2021, the selection of town officers, various authorizations um, that we um, provide at the beginning of the year, and then uh, prior year bills, and then we're into the uh, all of the FY22 expenditures, uh, articles 14 through uh, 18. Um, articles 19 and 20, um, uh, excuse me, Article 19 is an appropriation into our OPEB fund. That's also become part of our annual um, operating budget plan. Um, we fund it through an article, but that's also on there. And that's uh, our uh, fund for um, future health insurance costs um, to be incurred by the town. Um, appropriating funds to the participating funding arrangement fund. I, I have that on there. We do not customarily make that transfer at the... Uh, the June timing, but I put it on there. Older article. The ongoing secondary school building project litigation. And article 22 related to the ongoing 20 Elm Street litigation. Uh, we do not have dollar amounts associated with those, but uh, we're going to recommend that they be on our design in May. We'll direct for funding and. Committee to create a school rental revolving fund, which they will be able to provide us more information about um, at a future meeting. Um, there's also a related action we have to take to establish the dollar amount for that fund. Article 25, um, the finance director and I will be looking at the existing revolving funds that we have just to make sure that the, do that the dollar amounts are appropriate based upon um, what the experience has been in those funds, and we will recommend uh, changes if there are any. Article 26 and 27 relate to the uh, proposed development at 148 to 150 Park Street um, and properties uh, nearby there too. One of which creates the zoning district that we've discussed and one of which creates the senior housing. Um, it, it amends the map accordingly. Article 28, some of you have attended a planning commission meeting where this is discussed and it's the so-called small cell wireless facilities. This is the uh, successor to the um, traditional uh, cell phone tower 
uh, by replacing it with smaller um, wireless devices, um, lower to the ground, more visible in, uh, in the community. This would be uh, an amendment to our zoning bylaw to regulate those facilities to the extent that we can as allowed under federal law when they are placed on private property. This board, the select board will be receiving a recommendation for a policy that would govern any such facilities that are requested to be placed in the public way. Um, as the board members know, you're involved in the permitting of telephone pole locating and um, any such uh, similar location of this, these devices. Um, you will be receiving a recommended draft policy that the um, town planner is working on with town council to, uh, to guide design of those. Again, within the restrictions that are allowed um, by federal law on this matter. Articles 29 and 30, Article 29 is a citizen's petition to amend uh, the code of the zoning bylaws, um, rezoning 412 and 14 Concord Street. Um, this is, I think, an anticipated petition, petition at this point based upon the action at the uh, special town meeting held last August with the town not buying the property and the um, now owner of the property um, looking to rezone it as uh, industrial. Um, and the town clerk has recommended article 30, which would be a corresponding change to the zoning map um, to reflect that zoning change should it be approved. So I know that was a quick review, Madam Chair, um, but I, I did just wanna give you an idea of what's here. We normally, um, the, the articles are due today. We normally put them in the list form and just go through them to let you know what's pending out there. Um, not much in the way of surprises, I don't think uh, in terms of what has come in. Um, your next meeting, you'll see a draft of the warrant um, itself with the warrant article language uh, in there to reflect what's pending um, uh, at the next meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Questions, yeah. Mr. Walner? Uh, no, I think last year when we did this, we went pretty fast through this and tried to be efficient. So anything that was extra beyond the budget was really had to be there. So kind of hoping that's the case here and I'm sure it is. That's my only comment. Okay, Mr. O'Leary? No, no, no questions. Mr. Studo? No, Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, I want to load up for um, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of Mr. Studo, but today was the, can no article be proposed at this point? Um, no article citizen petition. The select board has control over the warrant at this point and can determine uh, what articles go on it between now and when when it, when the board members sign the warrant. It probably won't be until the first week or second week of May. So I just wanted to float this um, and just maybe have a little quick discussion from the board what you think of it. In light of the non-contested races time and time again with the select board and the time and, and the hours put in. There are other towns that do give a small stipend to select board members. Um, and I didn't know how the board might feel about that. Um, it might be an incentive for somebody to actually run. I'm not talking about life-changing money. I'm just talking about a stipend that might make people feel like they could give their, a little of their time um with a little something in return so i just wanted to float it and see what everybody thought of it uh, it might have been brought up in past years mr o'leary would probably know that um i just thought it would be a discussion yeah, i don't know if, uh, i'm sure mr o'leary mrs hurlbert could probably mr Kelleher too could probably give us i'm a okay with it if it's retro <laughs> <laughs> there I could afford that. But I can retire again. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the finance committee in there as well. That, that I, I did, Mrs. Gonzalez. Are you talking about all elected uh, positions? No, select board. There's many towns that that only stipend the select board, and only because I know that there's lots of other committees who give their time. The select board not only gives their time on the board, but also liaisons to all other boards and committees. And so there are towns that that do compensate very small amount. I'm not talking, I think, I, Mr. Gilberto, you might be more aware of, of 
the numbers, but I'm, I think like maybe a thousand for the year or something like that. Uh, Madam Chair, through you. Um, yeah, I have some familiarity. Um, you know, it, 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 it ranges, um, you know, between, you know, one and maybe 5,000 in my experience and what you see. And it may vary depending upon um, the position. Uh, it's often limited to uh, elected uh, officials um, and sometimes limited to, to select board members. Um, so, you know, there's a range that's out there. Um, and um, some communities, you know, had it and did away with it. Some communities had it, did away with it and reinstated it. Some communities never had it and have, um, have reinstated it. So I think it kind of runs scant. And I, I will just offer my, my personal comment, which is, uh, you know, you all put in a tremendous amount of work outside of these meetings, which are often um, you know, long meetings. So I, I certainly recognize the, the work that goes along with it. I see Mrs. Hurlbut has her hand up. Please, Mrs. Hurlbut, you're on mute. Please. Um, yeah, I have a little problem with the reasoning behind um, giving a stipend. Um, and that is that I don't think there's anybody that can count to 10 that would take the time and the energy and serve on the board of selectmen for $1,000 a year. I don't really think it's the kind of reward that is, is valued or should be in place. And, and I also think, while I understand that there are communities that do offer a small stipend for members of the boards of selectmen, I think that we also have to consider the fact that there are a number of people in this community that have volunteered on multiple committees at the same time and attend many meetings, including the BOS meetings or the SB meetings. Um, and that, you know, I don't think that's going to make them feel really good. Uh, but mostly I really question Selectman Gonzalez's suggestion that we'll have more people run if we pay them a stipend. And I simply don't think that's the case. Thank you, Mrs. Robert. Mr. Studo has his hand up. Um, I agree with both, but for different reasons. <clears throat> I do agree with um, Mrs. Herbert that I think to make it a worthwhile, I don't even want to call it financial endeavor. I think at the very least you have to hit the 5,000 where then if you do 10 years, you're eligible for the state pension. I mean, if you're going to put a financial incentive, that's the real financial incentive. If you look in towns that have it, I have a lot of clients that past and present serve in towns where they got paid. And really, if you're looking for a financial incentive, it was really the state level incentive. It was not the town one. So I feel like, you know, in that respect, I do agree. I will miss her, but that if it's not, if you're not at least getting to whatever the threshold is, and maybe I'm misquoting the 5,000, whatever that is, I don't think there's a financial incentive to do it. I mean, um, you know, not for the amount of time you do it. You know, when you break it down, it's not, yeah, there's definitely a lot of hours. Uh, however, I do, I, I can say this, and again, I can't, I can't speak for anyone who, I only have experience, I had experience before on the finance committee for a short period of time and now here, but I can say that depending on the committee assignments, um, and again, I can't, and if I'm misspeaking, I can be corrected later, but I know there is one week where I spend 40 hours and I run a business and I have a five month old. So if there's any other committee in town where you could theoretically spend 40 hours going from committee meeting to board meeting to this, I, I haven't found it yet. And I may just be wrong. So there, there, I can agree that depending on the liaison assignments, and depending on what's going on within town, um, you know, I've seen just what me and Mr. Wallner, just the time we've put with like CPC discussions, like I, I am not aware of another position that is not an actual employee of the town where you're getting paid, where you clock the same hours of the select board that not that you want to clock, that you have to clock. Very different. Doing above and beyond, we appreciate, but there's things at the select board level where you don't have a choice or, or you're not fulfilling your duty. So, and again, I may be wrong there. I'm just speaking from my experience that I haven't run into anyone yet in any other elected co uh, committee 
who can say that there's weeks where they have a second job. So that that's where I do agree with Ms. Gonzalez. But again, I do agree with Mrs. Herbert that unless it's unless you're getting a state level benefit, then th there's no point. It's kind of a, the in between to me is not worth it. The hassle. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Suda. Mr. Gamer. I was all contribute here. We got FinCom, so good I don't opportunity. Know how to, um, change this prestigious committee that we have, but I just, you know, I don't know how you guys do it most of the time with the amount of time that the select board spends. We spend enough on finance committee, and then you just compound that times many when it looks at the select board. So I, I agree with some of the comments that I'm not sure a thousand dollars is going to bring a lot more competition. I don't know if we change anything, but I'm open, certainly open to other measures because I do feel like um, the select board going uncontested, it's a bad look for the town. And, you know, if there's other things we can do, uh, you know, I don't know what that is, but I'm certainly open to other ideas and, and other potential funding because I do think it's important. And, um, you know, it's certainly recognizing the hours upon hours that this board spends. You know, I think it's I think it's an idea open that we should consider and, and look at other alternatives as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gamer. No, I mean, uh, just from the chair, I I do know that this is uh, Mr. Yule when I when I joined the select board said the big lie is is a meeting every other Monday. And he was right about that. Um, and it's as big of a commitment or as little of a commitment as you can make for the town. But I don't think anyone that serves on the board is doing it for any kind of uh, financial benefit. I thought you were going to veer off into a different direction of perhaps if it's an uncontested race, we could do a special special legislation not to spend the money on the race or something like that. So I thought you were veering in a different direction than that. But I also, I have remember past discussions with my colleagues lamenting the lack of participation, but this is not for everybody. And in this town, there's a remarkable amount of volunteers who do so much, so many other things. Someone might not be running for this, but they might be coaching three soccer teams and someone might be, might not be, you know, want to serve on school committee, but they might be running the parent teacher organization and they might have, I know someone whose family does both. The mom does one thing and the dad does another. So it's a town full of volunteers and volunteerism. And I, you know, of course it would be nice to have a little remuneration for it, but I believe our reward for this service will hopefully be in heaven. So that's my thought on the matter. Um, uh, so the, the goal is really to participate as a volunteer, in my opinion, just like everyone else or so many other people that we're, that we're here with right now. Most of the people that are sitting in on this meeting are volunteering for different boards and committees. So that would be my two cents on it. However, if it's something, okay, and Mr. O'Leary. Uh, again, it's I'm been sorry, discussed. I thought I pulled everybody. I pulled no, it, it's been discussed over the years. I just said I wanted it to be retroactive. It's going to go into effect. That's all. But, <laughs> uh, but no, it's been discussed over the years. And, and maybe even there was a, a time when, to, to Mr. Studo's point, when service on the Board of Select, or Select Board, or we want Board of Aldermen and all the rest, counted towards um, state, county, and municipal government um, service. And, you know, that in and of itself uh, creates an, ex uh, could, it, could create a, an extraordinary expense because then people become eligible for, for health insurance uh, benefits, not so much the, the pension, but the health insurance benefits. You know, so if there is a way to uh, avoid that, you know, then there's something to be considered. And, and the big difference between, you know, the select board and, and most other committees, commissions, maybe other than the school committee is, and I think the school committee is precluded, precluded by law to be getting any type of stipends, um, is that, you know, while we participate through liaison and interests of other, whatever's going on in town, uh, we take the phone calls, you know, we have the constituent services that, uh, that um, other volunteer boards and committees and commissions don't necessarily have to uh, attend to. And depending upon the issues and depending upon uh, your accessibility, um, I mean, I got a call today, you know, 
which I texted the town administrator was taking care of. The issue was taken care of immediately, apparently, which is good. But I mean, you know, we all get those things. So, you know, it, it's not, it should not be an incentive for someone to run for office to get, you know, a thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollars. And even at five thousand dollars, if you put in the hour, put it down to an hourly basis, uh, doesn't pay much, you know, because uh, for the most part, everybody that uh, participates on this board uh, puts in an extraordinary amount of time and effort. So uh, by the same token, it would not be unreasonable for the general public to consider um, offering a stipend for people who are willing to serve in this capacity um, to help cover the cost. Because again, as we as we participate in these things, we also incur some costs. We go to different events. We you know this past year, you know, you buy tickets to things you want to be seen and you, you're always being hit up for uh, uh, whether it be the raffles or whether it be supporting different programs and stuff because of the position you hold, there's an expectation that you that you kick in. And so there are out-of-pocket costs. Anybody who does this job, it costs you money. Never mind the time, but it does cost you some money too. So, you know, uh, certainly I've never done it for the I've been in it for the mo for the money, that's for sure. Uh, and again, it, it's you know, you're hoping to make some change and hoping to uh, make for a better community and and hoping that you make a difference in people's lives, you know, not just for the current people who live here, but for future generations. And that's where the reward is. But, you know, to offer a, a stipend of some sort would not be unreasonable, just so long as, again, it is impressionable and there's no benefits associated with it in relation to uh, the retirement time. And I think that's where a lot of communities got away from it. They got away from it in a couple of areas. One, always during fiscal crisis and times, one of the first things to cut, you know, they cut our own side. So I mean, cut the thousand dollars or two thousand dollars is a nice gesture and you know you're trying to maintain um level services they gave it up sometimes brought it back in um but you just got to be cautious of not making sure that people come in and try and take advantage of the system um to get on get on the health insurance plans so you know it's worth considering and again i wouldn't necessarily opine one way or the other i just say to the public what do you want to do you know, if you want to put it out there and let the public decide, that, that's fine. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have an opinion. I'm certainly, I wouldn't be running for office just for the thousand or two, mm -hmm. whatever it is, or whatever you're th thinking. And I don't think it's going to incentivize people either. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Studo and then I'm Mr. just going to do a follow up uh maybe i earned some credit the last like hour and a half i didn't talk much as you could see i became a mute for some reason i could have at least said no thank you no comment um so and and i do agree maybe if it is something that like mr o'leary said we want to bring to the voters maybe what mr gamer said is correct that we should um cup map out if there is something that makes sense outside of a straight you know just you know, some other incentive, I don't know. But, and I think maybe, I mean, of course, if there's a financial one, you got to go to town meeting, but I think that would be better than, uh, you know, and it, uh, then maybe just, you know, going to town meeting in June, you know, unless Mrs. Gonzalez already had some ideas of this saying like, hey, um, can you give us some money? Thanks. So <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. So, um, but thank you. Okay. I don't know if you, Mr. Walner, anything you want to add to the discussion? No, I mean, it's an interesting discussion. The only thing I've ever found to be uh, what I'm starting to feel it is just when, you know, to even get on the board, you're supposed to put up a million signs around town. And I just find that like having to shove out money just to get on the board seems like, you know, that's just asking too much because it's, it's, I already know you're going to be putting a lot of time afterwards. So, you know, again, I don't think this is conventional at all. It's probably a stupid idea, but if there was ever such a thing as a campaign fund where people could at least run a campaign from some sort of pre-established funds, that I think that would be a, a, a good thing to at least make the pain of entry a little less painful than having to come up with whatever it takes to do science. And I didn't have to do science because it was uncontested, but if it ever comes up, I know I'm going to be feeling it just because I just just think it's wrong. I just think it's the wrong thing. You shouldn't have to pay to get into the board. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show my frugality because you know if we have some opposition, I have to put up signs. It's still gonna say selectman. <laughs> I'm not buying new signs that say select board. That. I still the have I still have a bunch of them up on the shed. Pull them out every three years. 
you said that, right? And you didn't need to do new signs. And I'm the same, Mr. Walner. I there was it's not contested, but I don't think that that's due to a lack of interest or apathy. This isn't for everyone, and yeah, you're yeah. the face, and you're the one that gets, you know, the the accolades and the attacks, which is okay. You're not in this with the thin skin. We're in this with the thick skin, but. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I didn't ever had to buy signs at this point because the the time my my times have been really on with Mr. O'Leary running with, and I think we were the second the first time I ran was the second lowest turnout in the history of North Reading. And I think they well, were maybe, trying to break that record again this time but, <laughs> because people still have another day. Oh. I know we need to be presumptuous. Right, right. And I don't know. So I, I think but it, it might be if it's something you want to pursue, I think we would have to I think we would have to let town council work on it first before it even becomes a warrant article because I think there might be there, there might be charter provisions that apply to this that it might require something more substantive than a warrant. Uh, you know, just shall we give the board a non-pensionable stipend? I think it's probably something more com complicated than that, given that it they've never been provided before. Uh, so, Mrs. And I, I wouldn't want to disenfranchise any of the other elected boards or anything else like that. Like if that's going to create a division as well, that would be, you know, that would be a negative byproduct of that if that happened, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mrs. Mrs. Um, Mrs. Gonzalez. Just, just for clarification, um, we're all here for the right reasons. And I don't think a thousand or $1,500 is gonna make anybody come for the wrong reasons. <laughs> you know, it, in my mind, I mean, it, it was brought to my attention because of several other towns that I know of that do receive that small stipend. And what was said to me is I can take my wife on a vacation, you know, once a year. It, it makes me feel better that I've put all this time in and taken it away from her. So just that kind of a, a it just got my wheels turning and made me think, you know, maybe even though it's not a lot, it's, something like that you know I can make up for the time I took away from my family and take them on a vacation um something like that 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 was my thought process I just thought it was something that we could bring up and discuss and and throw it out there that's all not to take away from any of the other committees by any means I know that everybody puts their time and effort and takes away from their family um, it's just that the other towns that I compared this to, it's only the, the select board that, that does that stipend. I don't know of any other committees that do it. The moderator gets paid $50 a year. Salary. <laughs> when we remember to pay him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. All right. Well, I okay. guess how to... How to <laughs> Which he I, donates, by the way, all fifty dollars of it. Okay, not taking his wife on a vacation with it. Go figure. Another fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Take her to Dairy Queen at least. <laughs> <laughs> I would maybe just maybe recommend <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez. Maybe you work with the TA and um, on that to to see how that might even could even be proposed uh, that. I know you're just discussing it, but yeah. Um, again, I thought your direction was going to be something related to if it's an uncontested election. Um, Maybe we should pay the spouses. <laughs> so anyway. All right. So maybe that that might be something. I, I don't know if we have a consensus on that at this point. However, maybe you need to flesh it out, I guess, with the TA and Probably the finance director is over there, probably trying to count the pennies, figuring out where the heck are we going to get this money? Yeah. Um, to bring it up. <laughs> all right. Okay. Any, and there, are there any other, I did, I actually did have a question on the article review too. If my colleagues are all set with the articles, all set. Um, when are we going to see the uh, potential or potential or proposed 
zoning um, changes and the small cell antenna ordinance or bylaw. When will we have those, Mr. Gilberto? And did we already see, I know we saw a draft of the senior overlay, right? That's correct. Yes, there, there were, there was a draft of the senior um, overlay district. Um, I believe that some language has been submitted through Karen and the planning commission today on um, the other articles. Um, and so we can make that available to the select board through share file. So at least you'll see it before it appears at your next meeting in the actual warrant. But we do have some language that's come in um, that we can make available to, uh, to you. Okay, great. I think the sooner that the board sees and reviews that, that we can maybe have that, can, maybe we could have a review of that at our next meeting, the board meeting, just so we understand what it, what it is that's being contemplated. Okay. All right, okay. So I think now we can move on to the next order of business. Which Madam is Chair. Mr. Gilberto. So the, during the discussion, the finance director has reminded me that I, I think we had some feedback from the auditor about a potential article that's necessary relative to our cell tower revenues. So um, that, that's not on the list here. So we'll add that for your review uh, with the language the next time you see the warrant. Okay, great. So thir 31 warrant articles. 31, possibly 32. So clearly we're gonna to have to schedule two days of town meeting. <laughs> All right. So next order of business is to review the updated fiscal year 2022 revenue and expense plan. Madam Chair, through you, I've asked the finance director just to put together a very brief presentation. Not a whole lot has changed. I think the most important thing we wanted to show you was where we stand with our projections for health insurance and where the uh, projected um, um, you know, uh, numbers are relative to the requests and to the um, available funds for uh, for the budget. And I'll turn it over to the finance director. Excuse me, Ms. Roar. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. So um, as the town administrator mentioned, there has only been um, one change to the revenue plan and um, that is a favorable change to the health insurance budget. Um, the other item that I will show, and uh, the town administrator touched on it um, briefly at the beginning of our budget conversation, is the um, municipal shortfall as well um, as the school shortfall um, as we stand today for available revenue. So uh, the beginning, the top part of this slide, we saw at um, our last meeting, uh, I believe uh, it would have been maybe February 22nd or uh, somewhere, Maybe it was even March 1st, um, I don't, I don't, whenever our last review of this was, but um, so nothing uh, in this area has changed under tax levy to other financing sources. Those items have not, not been adjusted. Um, we will move down to a quick snapshot of the budget, fixed cost total. The fixed cost total uh, has been reduced slightly and we will see that on a further slide. And then you see the municipal departmental budget requests and the school recommended budget. And you see our budget gaps. So the municipal departmental um, budget requests uh, total 18,202,000. And the school's recommended budget totals um, 34,352,000. And the school's recommended budget gap to revenue available is 834,000. And the municipal's budget gap based upon departmental budget requests and available revenues is 851,853. So that is where we stand today. So that is um, one of our updates that we have for this evening and quickly, just going through um, 
the revenue plan and this was reviewed at the financial planning team meeting. As I mentioned, nothing has changed, changed in the taxes uh, field or in local aid state aid categories. So those revenues have not been changed. Nothing has changed under local receipts or other financing sources. We continue to monitor motor vehicle excise as well as meals tax. That's why they're highlighted in red. We just want to monitor and see how our revenue stream is in FY21 for those two items. Motor vehicle excise, our largest commitment, went out um, around February 26, I believe, and it's due March 26, somewhere around then. So we will have a better idea at the beginning of April um, how that figure looks. Um, and then as I mentioned, the change that has been made since our last review of the revenue plan was to um, health insurance. We had been carrying a seven and a half percent increase to the health insurance budget. And we are now carrying a 6.6% .6 increase to the health insurance budget. So um, you can see those reflected in the items that are highlighted in red. We carry a health insurance contingency as well as the PFA, which is um, our offset that helps us reduce our health insurance figures and helps us to achieve savings each year on both the employee and the employer side. And we have a stabilization fund set up for this, as well as um, an employee benefit account that is set up for this. And then down under employee benefits details, school health insurance and municipal health insurance have been reduced to reflect a 6.6% increase over FY21 compared to the 7.5% increase that we had been carrying up until um, March 1st. And then just quickly, this is a snapshot of um, total general fund revenue, which includes taxes, um, state aid, other financing sources, and then fixed costs as we just saw on the last page is uh, from the capital improvement plan down to the health insurance contingency. And that gives us our total amount available of revenue to be split between the school and municipal side, which we will see on the next slide. Over here, we have the percentage allocations that are as they are today. These are subject to change and could change depending upon where we end up um, in discussions with the financial planning team. And you can again see here, the municipal departmental budget requests totaled 18 million and our current uh, budget shortfall, budget deficit, budget gap, uh, according to our submissions against our available revenue is 851,000. And then we come down to the school's recommended budget request of 34 million 352, and they have um, a shortfall of 834,000. So that is quickly. And then just the only adjustment to our major fixed cost drivers is a slight reduction to total fixed costs, um, which was reduced due to the reduction in health insurance and the other item that has been identified and reduced here was this was carried at 7.5 and now it's 6.6. .6. Okay. That is okay. Um the some questions. Liz, when you showed us the slide to it, it didn't show the bottom numbers on the slide. I don't know if you can shrink your slides there. Mr. Gilbert. Oh, it did not show you? Yes, yeah, um, the bottom on that slide, yeah. On the last slide or this one? Yeah, you can go to the last slide. I think that'll show it. Well, but it happened with both of them, but the last slide will show more information if you can fix it there. Sure, hold on one moment. Sure. And Mr. Gilbert, I think you, you were going about to say something before I asked for questions. I, I was, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I was just going to, oh, there, there it is, Liz. Is this okay? 
Yeah, but it's showing. It's smaller, but it is showing. Yeah. Um, you know, clearly we have a challenge um, before us, um, you know, and, and I, I think that as we have done in previous years, you know, through the financial planning team process, we will work through this challenge so that there is a balanced budget um, available for the June town meeting. Um, this is the first um, you know, iteration, if you will, of um, all of this information in one spot. Um, there are some you know, areas on the municipal side where we know there need to be adjustments that will have to be made, one of which is the trash fee, which we'll be coming back to you with, and that will create some revenue that will offset the increased cost that's in the DPW budget for sanitation. Um, and I know the school committee is working through their budget and we'll be having a workshop this coming Friday, I believe, and also uh, having a, um, sorry, a webinar this coming Friday and is also gonna be having discussions at their meetings. So we really just wanted to make the select board aware of where things stand as we, <clears throat> excuse me, conclude the budget hearings and the work that Liz and I will be doing in the next uh, four weeks or so to um, present something that is um, reconciled and balanced and um, you know, still to the extent possible preserves uh, services. Okay, let's get some questions for the finance director, Mr. O'Leary. Just in relation to uh, OPEB, I mean, we're kind of level funding that at 300,000. Um, what is our actual, what's the actuarial studies telling us that we should be putting aside? I mean, obviously, I, I find it hard to believe that we're meeting our obligations moving forward. And then I think, and I've been advocating this for years to, you know, stop the bleeding and put a tourniquet on it and move forward. What, what should we really be putting in there? Um, through you, Madam Chair, we will be having a discussion with the actuary uh, shortly as we are wrapping up the FY21 um, annual audit. So we will have a better answer for that once we have a discussion with the actuary and she reviews our FY21 um, audit and financial statements. Okay, and then in relation to uh, uh, the Pulte property, um, I mean, obviously the projections that we've been using uh, can be modified looking out on a timeline because it's talking about 52 new, more units. But how have we been doing as far as uh, the projections in relation to the actual buildings that have been going up? Madam Chair, I can speak to you know, construction um, itself. And there, there was a lag, um, I think, uh, over the past 16 months or so. Um, and, um, I think we, you know, through the process that I think you're all familiar with, with regard to the board of appeals, we know some of what was driving that lag, I think. Um, but, um, you know, we're encouraged to see that construction of the fourth building is underway. So if you drive by the site, you can see that they have the uh, staircases, um, up in uh, the, concrete, the concrete for the staircases. So. Um, clearly, you know, work is you know picking back up, and we're expecting, um, you know, with the granting of the special permit, that uh, it will even further continue. So I, I think there's been a bit of a lull, and you know, not a total shutdown, but it's slowed down. Um, but I think we can expect it to pick back up based on you know all the signs that I've seen um, in in recent weeks. I'm just concerned. Or how have we been accounting for uh, the revenue stream? I mean, I know there's a delay once the buildings are get their occupancy permits. It's a little while before they get hit with the full assessed valuation, and we start seeing the, the full tax revenue benefits of each unit. Mm -hmm. um, is, we that, is that something? That have we been conservative enough in our estimates um, where we're not going to get caught short because of the lag, Mr. Gilberto? So just in terms of the occupancy, I think they had another building that was occupied um, in uh, in December of this this past year. So that will get picked up on uh, January 1st um, for uh, being available. But I'll, 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 I guess I'll ask Liz to speak to the timing and what she's heard from the assessor about that. What I understand from the assessor, and we can have further discussions um, with the assessor, is that we are being conservative in our... Um, revenue estimates um, and you know we do continue to monitor it. She does continue to have um, co conversations with the building department um, and actually does go out to the site as well. So um, you know she is staying on top of it. No, I'm just thinking as far as you know obviously annually we're at the stage of the game where we have a significant you know budget gap but you know the departmental proposals 
and then what we finally end up balancing the budget. I just was wondering if this was an area in which we could uh, uh, glean some more revenue, actual revenue that we can count on to help close the gap. I don't believe that's the, the case, um, especially with the new growth figure. The assessor was very clear on that that was as far as, as we could go. So, um, but we, we can take another look at it. All right, I'm good, thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? I don't have any questions, thank you. Mr. Walner? Uh, no questions, thank you. Mr. Studo? Oh, and Mr. Studo, we lost Mr. Studo, did we? Yeah, he's there. Is he there? Yeah. All right. I can't see him, but I, I wanted to follow up and further. No. Oh, <laughs> no, Mr. Sorry, I was on mute. I couldn't. Sorry. My screen froze a couple times. Do you have any questions of the finance director? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have two questions. And one of them is a follow-up to uh, Mr. Mr. O'Leary's question. And I think because we had sort of um, um, condensed presentations this year that we didn't see the, the, this new growth laid out. And we, ha we usually see the new growth in general and the new growth related to Pulte from the assessment. I think it might be a good idea for us to or did you, I, I don't know if it's, I see new growth. Did you, oh, you do have it. Okay, great. Because I think the building commissioner said that permits requests actually increased. So we'll, hopefully the assessor is tracking along with that, with the, with the development and making sure that the value is properly assessed for those, especially the new, the brand new units and things like that. So so you think this, when you, when you show me, I'm sorry, uh, Liz, but your screen is, I can either see part of it or only some of it. So when this is separated out like that, um, this is your, this is the figures that you have come up with or did the assessor provide this for your, for your. The assessor provides these figures. Okay. So she is estimating $457,600 for uh, 104 Lowell Road for new growth. Okay. For FY22. Okay. So that was separated out. That's good. All right. Yes. And my second question to you is with regard to the earmarked percentage for the health insurance benefits. Yes. You know, and th this is something that as a board, we have always, you know, sort of advocated for seven, seven and a half percent as kind of a, a bare minimum to that. So I just wanted a little bit more of your thinking with regard to the, the slight decrease in that. Is that because now we have a history of, of this um, that's been a success or is that based upon what we have in the in the funds, you know, the reserve. That is, um, I, I will defer to the town administrator, but that is what we received from Blue Cross Blue Shield. Madam Chair, through you, that the finance director is correct. That is a, a, a renewal proposal that we have received from Blue Cross Blue Shield when combined with, uh, I should say also combined with the PFA, which uh, is a, an important component of how we offer um, active employee health insurance. So what you see there is a, an increase that's reflective of, of that, um, that proposal. We, we haven't accepted that proposal at this point in time, still working through um, that process and we'll be meeting with the IAC and discussions as well. Um, but we sort of you know, felt comfortable we could adjust the, the percentage increase overall to reflect that and still maintain the level of performance of the PFA that we've seen in recent years, which has been very good. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, I think this that we can move on to the next order of business, which is to review the status of temporary outdoor dining at restaurants. And we'll go to you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Where Miss Mrs. Gonzalez, are you? I'm here. Okay. 
Mrs. Gonzalez, to you, Madam Chair, would you like me to give an update of where we stand in the process? Oh, yeah, that would that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, we had uh, six establishments last year that this board uh, granted approval for uh, outdoor dining, um, mostly in June, if I recall correctly. And through, that was done pursuant to an emergency order of the governor. Um, the board was given the authority to extend that approval to up to 60 days after the end of the state of emergency, which the board did almost immediately in September, October last year. So there are, I believe it's six establishments already pre-permitted to go forward with what they had last fall um, um, here in the community. And we know of, uh, we, we have contacted all of them to let them know that that is the case. We did so about two weeks ago through the public safety director. Uh, one has responded, um, Horseshoe, indicating that they intend to resume that um, sooner rather than later. We expect that there'll be others as the weather turns and as we get further uh, into the spring and the weather's a bit more liable um, for uh, these establishments. Um, and, and assuming no changes to what they do, they'll be all set. Um, if there are changes, then they, they will need to apply for... Um, for review of the changes before this board. Very similar expedited permitting process. We do not intend to change anything because it worked really well, we thought last year through the process the board set up. And so we'll continue to, to recommend that. Um, but an issue that did come up um, and, and um, has been brought up and Mrs. Gonzalez, um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go into it um, and you certainly can add to it if you'd like. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so an issue that's come up um, both in conversation between Mrs. Gonzalez and I and also with the Mass Municipal Association is what happens when the state of emergency ends. Um, you have a 60 day window. No one knows when that will be, um, but these, in, these, these businesses are, are, are looking to, um, you know, I think are looking for some certainty if they're gonna invest in the furniture, in, in the, um, the bollards or the, um, the Jersey barriers uh, in the tents um, and, and the rental of the tents. And, um, you know, one challenge that we, we find out there is that you know, we can't provide them that certainty outside of the order. And so um, I'll, I guess I'll turn it over to Mrs. Gonzalez for her thoughts on it uh, as, as you wanted to put this on the agenda. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, so my concern was in finding out that once the state of emergency ends, there's a 60 day window that, that outdoor, the extended outdoor dining would end. So my concern was you know, what if that's the middle of the summer and these people who have invested into that would have to stop? Um, so I contacted Mr. Gilberto to see what we could do about that to ensure that they would be able to at least get the entire season, you know, hopefully through to the fall to be able to continue that and not have to stop. So, um, Mr. Gilberto looked into that and came up with um, a letter that he feels that we should send to Governor Baker. Um, and is that in the packet, Mr. Gilberto? It is, uh, Madam Chair, through you, there was a draft right. and then there was some, um, we, we, we improved the letter <laughs> with some feedback. And so if you look in the folder, it's actually a standalone PDF now, it's not in the main packet. Uh, but it's a very similar letter to what was in there. Um, you know, basically asking the governor to extend the emergency order through December 31st, 2021. Um, we know businesses likely won't take advantage of that full extension. They'll probably go into November like they did this year, but um, it's the cleanest and probably the most expeditious way for them to have the certainty. Um, in a call with the MMA, the Lieutenant Governor uh, indicated she would carry this concern forward to the state administration. So there may be action on it, but. Uh, we're suggesting that the, the board, um, if it supports this, um, you know, uh, approve this letter and we'll send it to the governor, copy the delegation and let them know um, of our support. Short of that, um, there would be avenues for these establishments to continue to have outdoor dining, but it will become much more complicated. They'll have to go through the ABCC for approval of the premises. There may be a requirement for site plan approval depending upon the site as well. It just becomes very involved and, and I think is counter to the purpose, uh, at least at this point in time. Um, and I did review this with the public safety director as well, as well he's in support of, of extending it if we can get that approved. Okay, uh, uh, questions or comments, uh, Mr. O'Leary? 
I say go for it. it, it to me, I think it's, uh, for, you know, our restaurants here have a, a lot of ground to make, be made up, first of all. And we don't know how, you know, we're hopeful that um, things loosen up a little bit and more people go out and are able to do so safely. Uh, but again, they're making the investments. Um, I, I think they should be allowed to do it through the entire season. And I wholeheartedly endorse uh, the letter that's being proposed uh, to allow it to happen. And uh, then, again, then it becomes a business decision for them as to whether they want to do it or not. So. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner? Yeah, um, I think it's a good idea. We should write the letter and if the businesses want to set up those see-through igloos with the heat. Uh, in the winter months, go for it. I think it's a creative idea. <laughs> Good idea. Thank you, Mr. Wall. Mr. Studo? Yeah, I do <clears throat> support it. And also, maybe a question. Um, do you know how the city of Boston is going to handle this? Because I know about 20 different restaurant owners that are probably putting more into outdoor furniture than, you know, what we're going to spend on parks and recs for like the entire year. So... The question is, do we know if, you know, meaning if typically if the city of Boston gets on board with something because it affects so many restaurants there, it's something that, you know, we could take advantage of. But do we know if they're like also under the same problem where if all of a sudden, you know, the outdoor seating rule like goes away, what you just said, Mr. Uh, Gilberto, like the emergency order. Did, on that call, was it discussed of how they were going to handle it and if we can like piggyback on that? Uh, Boston was not. Uh, sorry, Madam Chair, <laughs> through you. I, I just want to, uh, the governor's orders is just a relaxing of the standard. We can still allow outdoor dining, but it would have to go through all of the really specific formalities. So the governor's order, order doesn't it just didn't just start with that order. It just relaxed the way that we as a board can grant these permits. And the we could have shortened the period of time under the executive order or, or we what we did was we gave it the maximum period of time. And also it just reverts back to the regular Massachusetts general law. The, the governor derives his authority to issue these executive orders on the regulations based on the Civil Defense Act. But once the state of emergency is done, everything reverts back to the way the law reads unless we get a legislative change. However, we could still allow these, but it would have to follow the formality. But having said that, I think perhaps what, what we're seeing as a state is that some of this is feasible and workable so that maybe there will be a legislative change to the regulation. So I think it's a good idea. I agree with my colleagues on the board to send it because I think it's a good idea and there may even be something in the works by way of a bill, you know, that that's be, will be proposed or, you know, will that will be thought of because this works, it works for the business community for some. So mm -hmm. I don't so know that, that it's it's not unique to Boston, in other words, is what, although they might have, have a lot more outdoor permits that they issue on a regular basis than we, we do in North Reading, but that's because they have exponentially more liquor licensed establishments than we do in North Reading, so. So, just to clarify, I think you cleared up uh, for me, Chair Manny Pelly. But so, if the state of emergency expires, ends, however you want to call it, does any executive order that was tied to that also become a moot point because now it no longer has authority of law based on what you just mentioned? Meaning that for this, for example, let's say in June, right? there's just no way to justify the, the state of emergency anymore based on what you said. Will that automatically now nullify 60 days later, like, you know, like this? Am I, am I hearing that correct? I'm just trying to understand that. No, well, this, this relates to, and I think this is why Mrs. Gonzalez wanted this to be done just to state, speak our piece on it. But the, there are executive orders that derive under the regular authority of the governor. And then there are executive orders that derive relating to this particular emergency circumstance. Okay. So 
to to change a law on uh, yeah. this way uh, that, or to relax the standard in the law it required this this action and then some of this stuff that was changed due to covid are you know legal legal changes as well that the the legislative recognizes needed to happen i think the letter in our packet goes to all goes to the legislative delegation as well as the governor so yeah okay I, i'm just but i can't answer to you to that one how many of them will fall by the wayside and how many i haven't even studied all of them and we're up to yeah 79 no, at this point i i just mean this one specifically <laughs> There's no way i can answer yeah this one specifically i just because i i wanted to carry teeth like i and whatever they do we i agree i mean like we need a full season because it is expensive it's unfair because a lot of money can go into it but it just seems that what you just said is there's a general executive order, right? And then in this letter, it says COVID-19 executive orders. So meaning that the governor, let's say, even said, okay, I'll extend the COVID executive order based on what you just said. If he extends his own executive order, but then the state of emergency ends, does it nullify his executive order? That's my question. So meaning should we be asking for something different? No, I think... Well, I, I think that I think the town council worked with the TA and Mrs. Gonzalez on... Okay. The premise behind the letter and seeking what seeking what you know needs to be sought. It, the request needs to be sought. Okay. I think the goal, and I don't want to speak for Mrs. Gonzalez, but the goal, the, the goal to this was, you know, keep it less restrictive to apply. You know, so that's that was the, that was the goal. So, no, the governor can't by an executive order modify the law. And, you know, unless there's some, some authority by which he derives the ability to do that. So. Okay. Thank you. But I haven't studied. That would be an interesting, if I had extra time, <laughs> that would definitely be an interesting, that would be an interesting legal question. But then, and also, by the way, I'm not the board's lawyer. So I'm just telling you from my, um, background that that's all not as a rep not as being as the board's counsel okay um but i do think boards our our town council did work on this letter so for a consensus do we have a vote on this because i think we have a consensus to do whatever we can to help our business community and i think that was that was the goal mrs gonzalez had in trying to get this coordinated do we have a, do we need a motion for that? Or? There is a motion in the packet, yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Studo. Hold on, I, uh, I got three screens going here. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to sign a letter to the governor requesting the extension of temporary outdoor table service through December 31st, 2021. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. Next order of business. Just one thing, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, just, oh, just as a comment, uh, the um, I, I have heard from a couple of establishments who are truly appreciative of the outreach from the administration uh, in relation to this issue, and that uh, they were um, heartened by the fact that, first of all, there was outreach by the town without them having to reach out to us. And that they were being told that you know basically the premise they had in place would be fine so long as they didn't change from what they had already requested. So uh, I think it's a good positive action on the part of the administration to be proactive um, while the snow was still flying, you know, to contact the establishments to let them know that there was going to be some certainty from the town's vantage point to allow them to continue the activity going forwards as much as the state would allow us to do so. So yeah. kudos to the administration. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. All right, next order of business is the seasonal license renewals for Hillview Snacks, Thompson Club, and Robert Connors. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to renew the seasonal club wine and malt beverages license for Thompson Club, Inc., DBA Pro Shop, 2A Mid-Iron Drive to expire October 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And you probably is aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew the seasonal club all alcohol license for Thompson Club Inc. DBA TCC Grill to Mid Iron Drive to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, <laughs> second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manupelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to grant a common and particular license for Thompson Clubbing, DBA, TCC Grill, to Mid Iron Drive to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Aye. Mr. Walmer. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew the common ticket license for Golf Facilities Management Inc. DBA Hillview Snack Bar to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Okay. <laughs> and Manny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew this. Wait, which one did I just read? Madam Chair, I move to renew the transi transient vendor license for the sale of flowers, Christmas trees, et cetera, at 226 Main Street for Robert Connors, 58 Wyman Street, Woburn, Mass, to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. The menu Pelli is aye. I skipped one. <laughs> Excuse me. Golf Facilities Management Inc. Seasonal Wine and Malt Beverages. Madam Chair, I move to renew the Seasonal Wine and Malt Beverages License for Golf Facilities Management Inc. DBA Hillview Snack Bar to expire October 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. And Manu Pelli is aye. And, uh, Okay. Madam Chair, I move to sign the ABCC 2021, or is that something of seasonal renewal certific certification? It's a motion. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's on the next thing. Nope. That's yep, it's, yeah, it's under this. Yep. Okay, I get a second. Oh. <laughs> Motion. <laughs> was that a question? Second. <laughs> motion. I'm sorry, Mr. Strudo. Motion by Mr. Strudo. Second by. We thought there was more to the motion than that. Sorry. Motion, motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O we don't see what you're reading. So second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is I. And then the next order of business is to amend policy 1.21 alcohol licenses server training programs. This is our second reading. It's on page 71 of the packet. We did have our first reading um, after which we uh, approved or recommended changes that were incorporated in. And now this is our second reading. So is there a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to approve the second reading in adoption of the amended policy 1.21, alcohol licenses, server training programs, and to waive this, the reading of the entire policy. Second that too. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. 
Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. So it's adopted. It is. Great. And that will go out to our licensees. To all license holders, yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, our next order of business is appointments. Veterans Event Capital Improvement Planning Committee Facilities Master Plan Committee. Mr. Studo, do we have any motions? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to appoint Daniel Mahoney as a member of the Veterans Event Committee for a term to expire December 31st, 2023. Okay, motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any discussion? Seeing none. I'm sorry, who's it? What was Mr. your name O'Leary. again? I'm sorry. Daniel Mahoney. Okay, I vote for Mr. Mahoney. Mr. Walner. Daniel Mahoney. Mr. Studo. Daniel Mahoney. Mrs. Gonzalez. Daniel Mahoney. And Manu Pelli is Daniel Mahoney. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint the following individuals as associate members of the Veterans Event Committee for terms to expire December 31st, 2023. Mark Menzelli, Kimberly Menzelli, Kenneth Ravioli. Second. Mark Manzelli, Kimberly Manzelli, and the third individual. Kenneth Ravioli, or Kenneth, Ravioli. Kenneth Ravioli. Best way to okay. say it. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Could I this, miss Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, I just wanted to note that it, it, even with um, Daniel Mahoney, who was recently appointed as a um, associate member, we, it became clear that we needed another full member. Um, so Kim Manzelli, Mark Manzelli, and Ken Ravioli um, were all contacted and none of them wanted to step up to full membership, but Dan Mahoney did. Um, so I just wanna thank all of them uh, Mark and Kim Manzelli and Ken Ravioli for all the work they do on this committee and um, for coming back and continuing on. And thank Mr. Mahoney also for stepping up to full membership. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mrs. Gonzalez, I think. Sure. Any, okay. any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Mark Manzelli, Kimberly, Kimberly Manzelli, and Kenneth Ravioli. Mr. Walner. Mark Manzelli, Kimberly Manzelli, and Kenneth Ravioli. Mr. Studo. Mark Manzelli, Kimberly Manzelli, and Kenneth Ravioli. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mark Manzelli, Kim Manzelli, and Ken Ravioli. Okay, and Manu Pelli is Mark Manzelli, Kimberly Manzelli, and Ken Ravioli. Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint the following individuals to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for terms as noted. Michael Gilberto to expire June 30th, 2023. Elizabeth Rourke to expire June 30th, 2021. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing uh, none. Are they willing? <laughs> Mr. O'Leary, we're uh, not gonna. <laughs> No need to respond. Let them like, the yeah, before they respond, I, <laughs> I, I support uh, Mr. Gilberto and Ms. Rock. Mr. Walner. Michael Gilberto and Elizabeth Rock. Mr. Studo. Michael Gilberto, Elizabeth Rock. Mrs. Gonzalez. Michael Gilberto and Elizabeth Rock. And Manu Pelli is Michael Gilberto and Mr. and Elizabeth Rock. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint the following individuals to Facilities Master Plan Committee for terms as noted. Mark Hamill, DPW, September 4, 2022. Abigail Herbert, Finance Committee, June 30, 2022. Donald Kelleher, Capital Improvement Planning, June 30, 2021. 
Mark Hall, Historic District Commission, December 31st, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. See any discussion? Just with the, what's with the staggered terms, September, June, December? Madam Chair, through you, the terms were aligned with the existing term um, that they hold in the committee that they're representing or the position that they're in. So Mr. Um, Mrs. Hurlbert's finance committee term is reflected there. Mr. Kelleher's finance uh, capital from planning committee term is reflected there. That's where the dates came from. Okay. Thank so mo motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Mark Campbell, Abigail Hurlbert, Donald Kelleher, Mark Hall. Mr. Walner. Mark Campbell, Abigail Hur Hurlbert. Don Kelleher and Mark Hall. Mr. Studo. Mark Hamill, Abigail Herbert, Donald Kelleher, Mark Hall. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mark Hamill, Abigail Herbert, Donald Kelleher, and Mark Hall. And Manu Pelli is Mark Hamill, Abigail Herbert, Donald Hel Kelleher, and Mark Hall. And our next order of business is legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for January 2021 in the amount of $32,572.88 as follows. Kobelman and Page, 8560.92. Kobelman and Page, 1774.50. 20 Elm Street, 40B Project, 2203.50. That doesn't make any sense. For $12,538.92. Okay. Second. Hold on. Sorry. Why was that Motion. first? I'm sorry. Uh, Mike, can you help me out here? Why the, yeah. The, I mean, the, the motion says 32,572, but then the breakdown says 12,538. No, it, the, uh, the amount is $12,538.92. I don't know why it's written in that way. Okay, so the 32,572.88 error, yes. Okay, I'm just gonna reread it, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, so let's withdraw that motion and we'll yeah. do a new motion, okay. Thank Madam you. Chair, I move to approve legal bills for January, 2021 in the amount of 12,538.92. Copeman and Page PC, 8,560.92. Copeman and Page PC, 1774.50. 20 Elm Street 40B Project, 2203.50 for a total of 12,538.92. I'll second once again. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> and you probably is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve payment of 3373.67 for invoice number 11412, dated February 26, 2021. To Foreman Gregory Deptula, the litigation associated with the secondary school building project. A second, but is that the right number, Michael? 3,300. Yeah. 7,367. That, that, that is correct, although I'm expecting a further invoice for our next meeting. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That, that, re that re Madam Chair, through you, that reflects the balance owed after um, the. Um, uh, allocating a funds from a retainer we paid previously. Okay. Does that make Mr. O'Leary any other questions on that? Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? You do. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Wal Mr. Walner. Aye. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is <clears throat> Mr. Gilberto. Thank you. So uh, I believe we're up to the minutes now, and uh, I recognize that it's a very lengthy list. Um, you know, when certainly if the board is in a position of wanting to approve those, that's fine. Um, I really just wanted to put them out there so that board members were aware we did have some that were pending. Um, a series of them, this is the first time they're appearing before you, um, I, believe, I believe beginning with the January 25th meetings. The ones on the top part of the list, I know there were some issues with, which we've tried to address. But um, if we haven't, certainly, you know, we can bring them back at a future meeting. Our hope is to try to conclude these minutes being approved before Jane departs, though. People are ready. I can blaze through them. 
the, I did, I do have to say um, to my colleagues, there are some issues with <laughs> some of the language. I just, I think the spell check isn't catching the distinction. So I still see those noted, even though I did um, request the modifications of those that are in existence, some of them. So I'm, I, I think if, as we get to those, I can, I can ask you to hold off on those. It's the same issues that have been, that I, I mentioned before. So in, in some of the regular session as well, some, at least one of the executive session, but I can, as you, as you move to those, I can ask my colleagues to hold up on them. It doesn't make sense to approve them when I know that they were gonna have to be amended anyway. So um, if that makes sense. Yeah, let's do what we can. All right. Mr. Right. Sudo. Madam Chair, I move to approve the October 19, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. O'Leary. Uh, no, motion Mr. by Mr. Studo, second by Ms. Late. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the October 19, 2020 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the December 17, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Yenny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the December 17, 2020 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by uh, Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. In your pelly is I. Madam Chair, I, I move to approve the December 31st, 2020 executive session minutes as written. So th this, is the, this is one of the ones that has a language issue, uh, the language. You, you went for December 21 executive session? Yes. Okay. May I ask my colleagues to hold off on those so we can get the <laughs> wording changed on those? Okay. Sure. Okay. No, we keep going. Yes, please. So Madam we'll, Chair. Go ahead. So the regular one. The regular one we voted on. Okay, the executive session we're skipping. So we did the seven. Oh, so no, we only. Oh no, yeah. sorry, I'm losing. Okay, thank you. All right, now I'm gonna do the regular one then. Madam Chair, I move to approve the December twenty first, twenty twenty regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. In Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the- The, the uh, next um, the next two, I don't, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Studo, but the- the next two sets of January minutes is the same issue with this, this these, those three for some reason that, that I think it's just that maybe the spell check is. <laughs> so I'll just skip the word here, and, but it's the wrong word. So, okay. So I skipped um, the February 8th. Um, you, could you please, if it's all right with my colleagues, if we could skip over to the minutes of February 8th yeah. and I'll work again with Jane to get those fi fixed. Madam Chair, I move to approve the February 8, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. 
Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the February 22nd, 2021 regular session minutes as written. February 22nd? Yeah, 2021. Second. Yep. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the February 22nd, 2021 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the February 27, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the March 1st, 2021 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the March 1st, 2021 executive session minutes as written. Madam Chair. I, <laughs> yes, Mr. Gilberto. There was no such meeting, so I apologize for the extra, <laughs> the extra minutes there. <laughs> I knew that. I was just testing everybody. Yeah, no, I'm sorry about that, Vincenzo. Thanks for jumping in. Thanks for jumping in before I seconded it. <laughs> before we approved a meeting that never I, I, I actually thought Vincenzo knew because he, he looked like he wasn't going to read the motion, but I figured, oh, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, All right. So we'll we'll come back to that one <laughs> at a later meeting. We'll circle back to that one. Great. Okay. We can move on to town administrator's <laughs> report. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have uh, no further report this evening. Okay. And board member reports. Mr. O'Leary. Um, nothing other than the Board of Health will be meeting again this week. Um, to continue their work. And again, I appreciate it, but I think it's important to note that, you know, it has been just about a year since the state of emergency went into, went into effect. And uh, as we've been sounding the accolades of all of our department heads and employees uh, throughout the budgetary process, again, it's, uh, it's important to note this milestone and um, really once again, mention uh, how our town department heads and employees have, have stepped up and, and really uh, kept things clicking along for us here through these very difficult times. But I think it's also important to note that, you know, while there's, um, there's sort of a numbness over this whole thing here, where if you think about a year ago when we heard, you know, there was just a handful of cases, you know, uh, happening daily through the week. And we were, again, just uh, appalled by what was taking place and a little bit frightened by it. And, you know, I'm just afraid that uh, there's a sense of uh, numbness here where we become immune to, uh, really what's happening on here well today's cases are just over a thousand cases it's still you know 20 or 30 deaths or 50 deaths you know it, it is significant it is still a significant uh, impact on our communities I and mean, just this week you know, each day it was 1500 1500 new cases 50 60 80 80 deaths um we, we don't want to get numb to the fact that you can say oh these are great numbers now they're not great numbers. I mean, the impact on families and people uh, is real and it's happening still every day. And I would just hope that, you know, as things start to get relaxed, we start feeling more confident that, you know, the vaccines are going to start working for us and, and all the rest. You know, we, we can't be complacent about the necessary steps that have to be continue to be taken, you know, for the next several months, you know, by wearing our masks, keeping our distance, even after you're vaccinated, you know, to ensure 
that we get to back to some sense of normalcy sooner rather than later. You know, so I just wanted to make the point that, um, you know, while everybody says the numbers are better, the numbers are great, they aren't great. I mean, the impact is significant on families and on our communities. And um, so, so let's not fall into this trap. And, and please, let's just uh, continue to do what we need to do uh, as individuals to do our part, you know, to keep everybody safe, uh, get back to some sense of normalcy on an on a expedited timeline rather than uh, becoming complacent and feeling a little more liberated when we shouldn't be. So let's just be cautious and be patient. Uh, we've gotten through the hopefully the worst of it at this point because all these new strains are coming out of a different issue. But you know, let's just uh, give give thanks and appreciation for for everybody who's done uh, what they've had to do throughout this uh, very uh, tumultuous and trying times. And again, our first responders and nurses and doctors and all the rest that everybody's you know still praising, but. Let's just do our part to help make their job easier. And again, let's get back to normal as quickly as we can. And we can only do that if we're not complacent and we don't get too relaxed about things. And let's wear our masks and keep our social distance and do the best we can and follow the CDC guidelines. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, sir, O'Leary. Uh, we've been doing, we've been batching together board member reports and all the new business. I don't know if you had anything for all the new business. Oh, nope, that's fine. Thank I you. Covered it, I think, with that discussion. So, Mr. Walner? Yeah, um, just actually met today with the town aid committee, which has been fairly dormant. Not, not much has been happening there. And we took the time to kind of go through all of the different aids that we have for the residents in town, such as exemptions, work off programs, things of that nature. So we're looking at that, potentially going to do some outreach to the, uh, when when there's an opportunity to be able to meet live again, is to do like a once a year outreach at the uh, at the uh, uh, senior center. And, uh, but we really need to revisit on the tax aid committee. It's pretty dormant. It hasn't been active at all. It's kind of lost its purpose. And so we're going to meet again and try to brainstorm about how we can either revive that program or do something with it that would make more sense. But right now, it's just there's no way, to, there's no apparent way to fund it, and it doesn't seem to have any relevancy to the town. So we're taking a fresh look at it and see what we can come up with. Um, and the second thing is, um, I've only met her a few times, but Happy DeFranza is leaving our town, and she's resigning from the Historic District Commission. Um, what a great name, Happy. <laughs> uh, I know she's been a longtime resident. It always kills me when someone's leaving our town, you know, and I don't know why she's leaving. I, I'm sure it's for good reasons on, in her case, but uh, she is stepping down and that's a regret. So, you know, we, I, I personally want to thank her for all she's done for the town, but I certainly don't know everything she's done and maybe Steve does. So you probably know more than I do. Uh, the, the, your arms are long enough for the list that, uh, yeah. that, that as far as the contributions that she and well, she and her husband have made over the years uh, to our community and particularly for the Historic District Commission and Antiquarium Society and Oh, wishing nothing. I, I hadn't heard that she was she was leaving town, and uh, I just got the okay. letter yesterday, so it's, okay. regret. it's a regret to get it. Anyways, those are the only two things I have. Thank you, and Thank best you. luck, happy. Yeah. Okay, um, Mr. Studo. Um. So there was a, finally another meeting of the EDC where primary discussion was focused on how with Miss um, Egan from the chamber on how to get, um, you know, businesses kind of how to, how to take advantage to safely when we can do it to Mr. O'Leary's point, how to take advantage of the pent up demand that will and does exist. Um, I think everybody's just uh, waiting to get out and spend money. And I feel, especially early on, it's, it's going to be the communities or the towns and the business owners who really you know, create a buzz for their businesses. They're going to get that first, what I call avalanche of spending pent up demand. So we're going to have another meeting on the 30th where um, one of the things that may be discussed and it's a little premature, just because just an idea is to see if we can safely in midsummer, um, you know, once the numbers do look good, because I do agree with Mr. O'Leary. I mean, they're, they're better, but, you know, better from what, right? So it's, you know, um, maybe putting together something for business owners in an outside kind of venue, you know, just business owners to kind of strategize and say, hey, 
how do we take advantage of coming out of COVID, for lack of a better way to put it? So again, that's uh, another meeting on the 30th, I believe. Um, and then uh, also just from, from the ZBA liaison, I mean, Mr. O'Lear was at the meeting as well. Uh, the variants for Pulte did go through with the caveat that they do provide 50% affordable of the 52 units. So the variants went through and now goes to CPC for the final um, special permit change, whatever it is. And I've seen a draft letter. So it does seem that there is a recommendation for it. And then um, finally, just uh, eventually after budget season, um, the, the CPC is going to send out a letter and try to meet with the stakeholders for the uh, Winter Street project. And after that meeting and after budget season, because we, you know, warrant article, I believe that um, they, in conjunction with advocates, will come to us here, like a joint meeting, where they'll kind of give us the rundown that me and Mr. Walner have kind of already seen, but more, you know, more data, just to kind of start getting the opinions of other committees and boards and towns, you know, for that potential project or whatever else can get done in Winter Street. So um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Studo. Mrs. Gonzalez? Well, happy to report that the community impact team had a meeting, um, their first meeting since last March, um, with good reason because it is comprised of the health director, the fire chief, the police chief, the superintendent, the TA, the youth activities director, mental health, the town nurse, all the people that were very, very busy all year um, dealing with COVID. So um, a positive sign to see that the committee met and, and had the time to do that. Um, and some positive things talked about um, Catch, uh, catch My Breath um, program, uh, a vaping program that when brought to students is showing them to be 75% less likely to vape after they have been part of this program. So um, Amy talked about bringing that forth. Um, just, just some great um, conversation about different things. But uh, most importantly, what I wanted to report is that there will be a drug and vape take back at the O'Leary Center on April 24. It will be a drive by from 10 to 2 um, to bring any drugs that you might need to get rid of in your house. And they're hoping to collect some vapes too. Um, so that's uh, all for the community impact. And that is it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I just want to, it's, it's late, but I wanted to say that, um, you know, um, in, in recognizing the, the other individuals that have really um, stepped up, this, definitely the superintendent and certainly this administration has stepped up um, in unusual year for Dr. Daly to be taking over from uh, Mr. Bernard. So um, and I also wanted to mention that um, there, there's going to be a parent forum tomorrow. It's hosted by, uh, it'll be hosted on YouTube. So there'll be a link. The school sent the link around to parents um, about uh, returning to, to in school learning and a plan or a discussion or a parent forum on that, which is, I believe it's at, it'll be at 7 30 tomorrow night. So to look online for that link if you didn't receive it already. And um, that's about it. So Mr. S I know that's not our, our jurisdiction, but it's important to let people know that, that, that there is plans in the works. There's light at the end of the tunnel for those of us with hybrid <laughs> students. So uh, with that said, uh, we'll, we'll take a motion to adjourn. I do have a question. Oh, oh. Mr. Studo. Just Go a ahead. question. Are we, I think it was a placeholder. Are we having the March 29th meeting? Is that, 
that we put it on just in case, or are we actually going to do it? I, I'm just curious, just so I can firm up my calendar. Or is it just too early to tell? Um, Mr. Gilberto, I didn't actually have that one scheduled. So if we scheduled it, it missed my calendar. We I just saw it in an email. I have it on my calendar. We did have it as a placeholder. Yep. Um, we got through quite a bit of business this evening, which uh, my hope is that it will put us in a position to not require a meeting on, um, on Monday evening. Um, I, I don't think that there was anything that came out of executive session that will require such a meeting. And if there were, we, we do have the opportunity on the 12th, April 12th. Um, so I think uh, my, my thinking, Madam Chair, was just work with you in terms of what comes up, whether or not there's a need. But um, by getting through everything tonight, I, I hopefully we, there won't be a need. Well, Maybe just keep it as a placeholder mm -hmm. until we, you oh, know. No. No meeting until April 12th. That'd be I was, awesome. I was going to ask for a request, maybe, since we're bringing it up. I wasn't going to ask for it, but I'm going to be away on the 12th, and I'm still going to call from where I was. But if we could potentially make it in the middle, compromise in the middle of the 5th. I won't be here on the 5th. All right, never mind. Then. That's, I'll just call in. No problem. Okay. So 29th is iffy. So we'll just keep it as a placeholder for those of you who actually put it in. As a placeholder. I, I, I had it on my calendar. <laughs> Did not. But I'm okay. So, I'm okay skipping it. So and then they just in case, and then we'll be be able to let the mem the members know, you know, the week before if we need it or not. I uh, the marathon meetings with the dockets two sheets long. I think are not including the Zoom link. I think are something we want to try to avoid but um that was great that the department heads were able to condense their presentations for us given the circumstances of covid and everything else so all right do we have a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn second motion by mr studo second by mr o'leary mr o'leary aye mr walner aye mr studo aye mrs gonzalez aye Manny pelly is aye